them waters open, I ain't trying to talk. All them babies getting rocked on us in the block. We gon' make the heat and hot like a dinner pot. Then I break them in the shivers to the quiver stop. Whipping and flipping my people opinion till all the chosen are sealed. You know that I've been a den as a watchman, so I've been watching the field. All I've been seeing is servants, our horses, thinking they king of the hill. We rising up to collect what they owe us, they gon' be paying the bill. I done seen the future in America, won't make it. I can look at Europe and I see it for the taking. China's about to fall, the economy is breaking. We ain't asking for the kingdom, man, we about to take it. Take it. World domination, we gon' take it. I don't need your money, yeah, we coming out to make you. The London Bridge is falling, the Eiffel Tower falling, Statue of Liberty is falling. Call that world domination. World domination. He will avenge them speedily. Vengeance, 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 vengeance. Now as we're waking up, we got a, our eyes have been opened up. Pray for vengeance. Pray for vengeance against our enemies. We suppose to pray for that and not think. Vengeance, every knee gon' bow. Vengeance, every knee gon' bow. Vengeance, every knee gon' bow. Every knee gon' bow, vengeance, every knee gon' bow, vengeance, every knee gon' bow. The king of kings and lords of lords, Edom, you gon' bow, Ham, you gon' bow, Elam, you gon' bow. To the king of kings and lords of lords, Edom, you gon' bow, Ham, you gon' bow, Elam, you gon' bow. To the king of kings and lords of lords, yeah, every single nation will see the Lord will bring it down to your knees. Ain't no begging or plea. Silence when you speak to the king. See the gold when you're kissing on the ring. Israel for the win. Listen to your head like David with the sling. Made weather in the ring. I can feel it burn when he scream. Control over people in the thing. Move like puppets on a string. Ah, uh, Lord about to take his vengeance. Wipe the devil's seed from remembrance. Angels keep track of attendance. And take a dose of sorrow from repentance. Try hiding in the caves and the mountains. It won't matter blood spilling like a fountain. I can tell by the look on your countenance. How many getting killed? Who's counting? Court press. You know it's coming down to the wire. Christ coming by the will of the Father. Baptizing with the fire. Straighten out your path with the iron. You choose but a pick your desire. It's a battle for your soul and the devil is a liar. I've been washed by the word. Now I'm going through the dryer. I can feel the heat but I'm golden in the finals. I don't need to plug the Messiah, my supplier. Put some respect on my name. Better stay in your lane. Don't dare call me boy, call me sire. Only give praise to the higher. Feeling real blessed because my name means Prince with the power. I remember what you did. I remember when you sacrificed the kids gave us trash when you fed us with the pigs turn my people in the nigs hammer time you about to get the pins don't beg man it is what it is yeah it is what it vengeance, is every knee gon' bow vengeance every knee gon' bow vengeance every knee gon' bow the king of kings and lords of lords vengeance every knee gon' bow vengeance every knee gon' bow vengeance every knee Just begun, war starts from Messiah comes from the sky, he can reign above, and that's better. Gotta stay true to the letter, so my grandma all white like a leper. Here's my vendetta. Gotta put a sword to your brain, but they hidden in the grave for respect to my name. I need power, kill him in the house. One, two, one, two. Men of Israel, blow trumpet. Trumpet down. Blessed be thy name, O Lord God of our Father, the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Father God, have mercy upon us, O Lord, as we come before thee to celebrate thy holy Sabbath that you said that was between us and you. Father God, we come before thee. Asking for forgiveness, Father God. Forgive our sins and the sins of our forefathers. Father God, have mercy upon us. Guide us, Father God, and protect us in these last days. We want to thank you. Thank you, Father God, for revealing your Son, Jesus Christ, to us in these last days. Father God, we also pray that you heal all the sick that is among us, Father God. All the brothers and sisters are going through pain, trial and tribulation, that you send your angels, Father God, to protect and heal us. 
We also pray, Father God, to send more laborers into that vineyard, O oh Lord. We also pray, O oh Lord, that you guide our path to righteousness so that we can work perfectly in thy sight. We ask, Father God, that you destroy all them that hate thee and thy people. We also pray, Father God, that you bring more laborers into thy vineyard, O oh Lord. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, we also pray that you open more doors, more avenues for us so that we could preach the gospel. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we also pray, O oh Lord, that for the leadership, that you continue to bless, guide, and protect them physically as well as spiritually. Let all the congregation say hallelujah. 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 In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray, we thank thee. Amen. Men of Israel, sons of God, patient saints, sons of God, hand salute, salute down, face sisters, and to the honorable mothers and daughters of Sarah, we say shalom. Dick is in the building. Oh, that's good. That's right. All praises. We in praises. this building. Welcome back, D. All praises. Thank you very much. <laughs> um. Well, thank you. I want to thank everyone. I'm um, happy Sabbath to all of you. Um, to those of you who are watching, happy Sabbath. To the enemies, yeah, I'm back here. I'm back, so it is what it is to you. I know you guys are pissed That's off. That's right. But it is what it is. But this is war! Um, but I want to start off. The class is entitled uh, The Flesh, Old Wretched Man That I Am. Um, I've been this truth for almost 20 years, almost 20 years. And when I first came in, um, I understood what was expected of me to an extent. And what I mean by that is that you go out, you go out, you teach the people and so forth. You know, you go out there and teach them, show them, you know, the truth, who we are. Christ is a black man. We keep the commandments. But one of the things that was missing with me was, was um, after a while became application. Bishop, 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 Bishop had mentioned before about something called battle fatigue, where you come into the truth. And over time, your strength weakens over time. And so I've, I've learned that. I've learned um, that through trial and error, it makes you a better teacher. Not, and I also understand why Paul was so open about what he was battling. I wasn't. And that leads to, that's how Satan gets you. When you're, when you're open and you're honest with yourself and your people and your brothers, it's harder for Satan to come, with, come at you. So I want to open up with this video clip real quick from a movie called Five Far Beats, made by a man named Robert Townsend. This is actually him in the movie. He's playing, he plays a character named Duck. And I want to play this scene that he, she, where he's talking. He's basically going into, he's, he was the, um, the performer of the Five Far Beats and also the writer of the music of the Five Far Beats. Great movie, great movie. Um, and I want you all to hear what he says when he's on stage accepting an award for, I guess, the, I think, best writer or whatever for their, for their group. Think for himself. Watch this. You know, I thought when I got this, I'd feel on top of the world, you know? This day I just feel. Uh, I, was at, I was at a party once in a, in a uh, music critic said, Donald Matthews is going to be a great writer one day when he suffers more. I said to myself, what does that mean? Now I know what it means. So, Donald Duck, well, Donald Duck, they call him, Donald Duck Matthews, he said he was told he'd be a great writer when he suffers more. So, I take that that clip, that, that particular scene, and I replace writer with teacher or prophet or leader. You become a great leader when you suffer more. The bishop has been going over these last few months about 
the tribulation coming, the persecution coming. And so many of us, we come, we celebrate Passover, and we're out there teaching, and we're building with the people. But there will come a time where we will suffer more. And a lot of the things that um, we take for granted now, we won't be able to in that time. I want to open up with, with Psalms 119 and verse 71 regarding what Doug said in this movie. And what David said the same thing. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 71. Verse 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. So David said, it is good for me that I have been afflicted. Because David went through a lot. David was a man of the Lord's own heart. I'm not David. I will never ever say I'm David. But now when I read about him now, I understand from experience what he was talking about. And that's one of the things I, that I lacked when I first came in, is I didn't put myself in, in, in this. I kind of just like read it as just words. I understood it was true, obviously, but after going through what you go through, now you can read it and understand, oh, that's what he's saying. That's what he meant. Now I get it. Read the verse again. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. So David said, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I went through what I went through. David went through a lot. David, he, he killed, with adultery, he did a lot of things. And so um, he made mistakes. Read on. That I might learn thy statutes. That I might learn thy statutes. Now, why is that weird? David was born and raised in the statutes. So why is he saying, it is good that I was afflicted, that I may learn thy statutes? Because when you go through affliction or you suffer more, you learn better. That's why I showed that scene earlier. Your Psalms 51 in verse 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 1. Have mercy upon me, no, read, O, o read God. The, read the, uh, the very top, the introduction to the chapter, what it says. Yes, sir. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came unto him, after he had gone in, uh, in to Bathsheba. Right, so David went and took Bathsheba, who was someone's wife, um, which I did not do. For you haters out there spreading these rumors, I did not do that. But nonetheless, in this particular instance in Psalms, David... Um, is talking about what happened when he was when Nathan confronted him about what he did regarding Bathsheba. Read on. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Go ahead. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Watch this. For I acknowledge my transgressions. Right there. He says, For I acknowledge my transgressions. For I acknowledge. My trans so David had to acknowledge it. Oftentimes when we battle within ourselves, whether it be lust or a, a hateful spirit, lying, stealing, idolatry, arrogance, pride, whatever it may be that's going on within you, we don't acknowledge it. We kind of like turn a blind eye to it. We dismiss it, put it behind us. Eh, it's not a big deal. But what you think is not a big deal over time becomes a big deal because you're not acknowledging it. David had that spirit in him long before this took place. That's why he's saying here, I acknowledge my transgression. He didn't before. But when he did what he did and suffered for it, then he understood, I acknowledge it now. Read verse 3 again. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Go ahead. Now I can see it now. Now I know what it is. Go ahead. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest. And be clear when thou judgest. Go ahead. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. So this class is going into that. This class is going into the flesh. O wretched man that I, O wretched man that I am, because David said, what? Read the verse again. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Meaning, sin means the flesh. This flesh we have on us is sinful. It's natural. It's earthy. We're going to get to that later on. But he's saying, David was saying, we were born in sin, and so we are subject to it. Go ahead. Verse 6. Behold, thou behold, thou desires truth in the inward parts. Go ahead. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Go ahead. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Meaning holy, righteous. Go ahead. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken might, may rejoice. That the what? 
that the bones that thou has broken may rejoice. That the bones which thou has broken. He's saying his bones, he means the most high is going to afflict him for what he has done. So the bones which thou has broken may rejoice. That goes back to him being afflicted, that he may learn the statutes. It's saying the exact same thing. But he said it later on. Read on. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Have mercy upon me. Forgive me. Go ahead. Create in me, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And do not, because that's what happens. When you don't acknowledge your sin, the Lord will leave that filthy heart in you. You'll become, you'll grow hateful. You'll grow bitter. And you'll grow to, and to resent brothers who are trying or sisters who are trying to help you. And so what ends up happening is, so David's saying, listen, create me a clean heart. Because what I did, at the time when I did it, my heart wasn't clean. It was wicked. So he's saying, Lord, cleanse my heart. Cleanse it. Read verse, read verse um, 10 again. Verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And renew the spirit that was in me before I did what I did. Put that spirit back in me. Go ahead. Cast me not away from thy presence. Because casting him away means that he'll leave in him that filthy heart. And he'll remove that right spirit from him. He's saying, don't cast me away. Don't make me a cast. Like Paul said, don't make me a cast away. Read on. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Because when you commit a wrong or an evil and that you know will hurt others, and especially yourself, you begin to lose that joy. You start to beat yourself up. You start to feel like you failed, like a failure. And so he's saying, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Go ahead. And uphold me with thy free spirit. And he's saying, uphold him because David felt what? Like he failed, which he did. But the Lord, as long as you're alive, you can always repent and get yourself together. Now, of course, in David's time, he was worthy of death. But the Lord, that's why he said, don't take your spirit from me, because David was worthy of death. But the Lord said, nah, I'm going to keep you alive. Because the Lord loved David. Read on. Verse 13. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways. He goes, once these things are done from verses 10 and down to 12, he goes, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then, read on, I will what? Then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. So, so David had to suffer more to become a greater teacher, a better, like, or he said in the movie, a better writer. It's the same thing, teacher, a better teacher or instructor. So David had to go through things in order for him to be able to teach and then convert others unto the Lord. Get um, Psalm 73, verse, verse 1. This is a Psalm of Asaph, actually, not David. Psalm of Asaph. The book of Psalms. 73, verse 1. Verse 1. Oh, you got a new Bible? <laughs> the book of Psalms, chapter 73, verse 1. Truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. Truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a, of a good, clean heart. Remember what David said earlier, put in me a clean heart. God is good to you, and your heart is clean. He's good to you. Read on. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. Asaph said, as for me, my feet were almost gone. I almost slipped up. Go ahead. My steps had well nigh slipped. Watch this. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. That happens. Oftentimes when you, when you are in the world, because most of us were in, here for, were in here for the day, then we were back out in the world again. You see the wicked out here doing whatever they want to do, making money, maybe getting six figures, eight figures, seven figures, and you working nine to five, struggling your behind off. You start to envy them. Damn, how come I, how come I can't do that? I can, I, that guy's an idiot. How come I can't do so-and-so? You start to envy them. And oftentimes that envy will, make, will lead you to do things that you would not expect to do oftentimes. That's why David said, um, put in me the joy of thy salvation. You got to put your joy of the Lord ahead of all of these things. Otherwise, you'll slip. Like he said, like, he, like Asaph said, he almost slipped. He didn't, but he almost did. Now. Um, get me 2 Maccabees 2. That was just a, no, give me 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. Because, again, um, it's important that you acknowledge the things, the wrongs you do. 
Um, and again, judgment from, comes for us all. And it's also important to understand that from the highest to the, to the greatest to the, to the lowest, and now you all see here, whether you do right or wrong, what we're wrong is spe specifically, you're going to face judgment for it. We're not partial here. My, me, going through what I went through proves that we are not partial. That you, regardless of whether, whether you're an officer all the way up, you mess up, you're getting put out of here. Get out. You got to go. So you get your SH together. So no one can say, oh, like, for example, I'll speak outside. You have, you know, you have Israel outside of, of, our, of our organization where you'll have situations where brothers will leave, sell drugs, come back, still the elder. Brothers will have threesomes, come back, still the elder. Uh, mess, uh, they'll... Um, Get uh, locked up, come back, still an elder. Um, Stephen Stone's wife, have an elder. Their daughter's out of order, wife's out of order, still an elder. No. In here, you go out, you go off, you get put out. You got to go. That's order. That's how things are supposed to be done. So those of you who have much to say while I was away, which is fine, understand that when, you're, when it comes time for you, because everyone has a term, when it comes time for you and yourself and your congregation, I, we hope and pray that the same um, um, fairness, equity goes on in your organization. When leaders in your organization go off, and they're not sitting next to you while they're doing all the evil. They're up on OnlyFans, they're in some hoes DMs, they're on Instagram, but they're still elder. Hope that ain't happening with y'all. It don't happen in here. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. So at the end of the day, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Go ahead. That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done. Things done in his body is going to go into that hellfire. You get destroyed, that damnation, or you get the new body. Go ahead. Whether it be good. Whether it be good, kingdom. Or, or bad. Or you're going to die, get destroyed. Soul and body get destroyed. So at the end of the day, we all, read verse 11. Verse 11. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and our trust also are made manifest in your conscience. So the point he says is that knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord. So it's okay to point fingers. I get it. I understand it. You know, and, and I've, I've, like I said, I've learned a lot in my situation. I've learned a great deal over this past, it's, it's while. I've been away for a while. I've learned, I've learned a great deal. And so I understand that we all must appear before the judgment seat of the Lord, all of us. Now, get me Luke 18, verse 9. This is a sidebar. This ain't even in my class yet. But it's okay. Luke 18, verse uh, 9. The book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 9. And he spake, to, and he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Uh -huh. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. So you had one Pharisee and you had one publican, one tax collector. Go ahead. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. So he's saying that this, this Pharisee is, making, is talking about how he's not like other men. He's holy, he's righteous. And then this guy over here. I'm not like him either. He ain't nothing over here. Go ahead. Verse 12. I fast twice in the week. Mm -hmm. I give tithes of all that I possess. I go out there and teach your word. Go ahead. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's what David said in Psalms 51. Be merciful unto me. Don't remove your spirit from me. Be merciful unto me, a sinner. Go ahead. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. Watch. For every one that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humble himself shall be exalted. Yeah, that's, a, that's one of the most important examples. When you, the more you're exalted, the more you abase yourself. And the more you abase yourself, the, the more you exalt yourself, the more you'll be brought down lower. There has, to be a, there has to be a certain level of there has to be a certain level of humility within you. And I've learned that over the course over this course of time. Get Second Maccabees two and twenty three. Maccabees 2, verse 23. Now I'm going to get into, well, it's the same. It's still part of the same being in the class, the same thing. 2, 23. 
the book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 23. All these things I say, being declared by Jason of Cyrene, in five books we will essay to abridge in one volume. They will essay, I mean, we will attempt, we will attempt to abridge the history of the Maccabees in one volume. Go ahead. For considering the infinite number and the difficulty which they find that desire to look into the narrations of the story for the variety of the matter, mm -hmm. we have been careful that they that will read may have delight and that they that are desirous to commit to memory might have ease and that all into whose hands it comes might have profit. Right. Therefore, to us that have taken upon us this painful labor of abridging. Of what? Of abridging. Abridging, meaning they had to abbreviate the history going on to Maccabees. They didn't put every detail. They just putting enough for you to understand what happened you know, and how it fulfilled prophecy written in Daniel. Go ahead. It was not easy, but a matter of sweat and watching. Mm -hmm. Carefulness. Go ahead. Even as it is no ease unto him that prepareth a banquet and seeketh the benefit of others, yet for the pleasuring of many we will undertake gladly this great pains, mm -hmm. leaving to the author the exact handling of every particular and laboring to follow the rules of an abridgment. To follow the rules of an abridgment. Because the Maccabees, first and second of the Maccabees are an abridgment, are an abbreviation of what took place pretty much somewhat, somewhat in brief regarding what happened during that time. Go ahead. Verse 29. For as the master builder of a new house must care for the whole building. For as the master builder of a new house must care for the whole building. That's a very heavy verse going into the writer. And we said earlier, the writer must suffer more. But he's also going into, this is going also into the prophets and so forth, being like Paul stays a master builder. Christ is a foundation. The disciples became master builders. He's going into that as well. But read on. But he that undertaketh to set it out and paint it must seek out fit things for the adorning thereof. Even so, I think it is with us. Same with them. Go ahead. To stand upon every point and go over things at large, and to be curious in particulars, belonging to the first author of the story. Mm -hmm. But to but to use but to use brevity and avoid much laboring of the work is to be granted to him that will make an abridgment. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Here then will we begin the story, only adding thus much to that which have been said, that it is a foolish thing to make a long prologue and to be short in the story itself. Right, we gotta be this concise to the point. So the writers of Maccabees made it clear we're gonna be to the point and make an abridgment. Now, why did I read that for? Regarding abridgment and so forth. Let's get Genesis 2. No, 2nd Ezra 14.3. 2nd Ezra 14.3. Go why did I go into that for about the abridgment or make things of brevity? So I got, matter of fact, real quick, look up brevity for me real fast. Brevity, B-R-E-V-I-T-Y. -V -V -E brevity. Brevity, brevity, what that word means. Read that brevity. Place. Concise and exact use of words in, w in writing or speech. Right, that's what brevity means. It says in shortness, uh, briefness, transience, conciseness, concision, uh, that word is crazy. I don't know. I'm skip on that one. Uh, compen Cons compendiousness, shortness, briefness. All right. So that's that's what they do with Maccabees. They they didn't give a whole layout. They just gave just enough detail. All right. So I guess it's 14 and verse three. The book of Second Edges, chapter 14, verse three. This is what Moses did with Genesis. Then said he unto me. In the bush, I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses mm -hmm. and talk with him when my people served in Egypt. Right. And I sent and I sent him and led my people out of Egypt and, so, and brought him to the Mount of Sinai, where I held him by me a long season mm -hmm. and told him many wondrous things. He told Moses many wondrous things, many wondrous things. Go ahead. And showed him the secrets of the times. And showed Moses the secrets of the times. Go ahead. And the end. And he showed him the last days, too. Go ahead. And commanded him, saying. And watch, he's commanded him, saying what? These words shalt thou declare. These words you make it public for everyone to understand. These words thou shalt not kill, steal, lie. These things are clear. Go ahead. Fringes. That's, that's clear. Publish. Go ahead. And these shalt thou hide. But, these, but there's certain things within the law you read about. It's not clear. It's dark. It's a dark saying. It's a parable for something more, something else. And now, verse six, go ahead. These words shalt thou declare, and these shalt thou hide. Jump to verse 25. Verse 25. Now, the, so the same thing that the Lord commanded Moses to do with the law, 
with Moses is the same thing he, com- he commanded Ezra to do. So I'm drop that right there. You know, same person. Anyway, he dropped, um, he dropped that, um, that same mission with Ezra. Go ahead. 25. Verse 25. And come hither, and I shall light a candle of understanding in thy heart, Go ahead. which shall not be put out till the things be performed, which thou shalt begin to write. 26. Watch this. And when thou hast done. And when you have done. Some things shalt thou publish. Some things shalt you declare. So he told Moses, he told us the same thing. Some things you shall publish. Go ahead. And some things shalt thou show secretly to the wise. Hide. Meaning you can't reveal. Remember Christ said the secrets belong unto, what's it, Matthew 13? Read, read verse um, 26 again. And when thou hast done, some things shalt thou publish. And some things shalt thou show secretly to the wise. Go ahead. Tomorrow, this hour, shalt thou begin to write. So some things you read in the law. Are open and clear, open, you know, clear, obvious. But there's some things even within the law, in the precepts, the statutes, that's more to it than just law and commandments. Was it Matthew or 13? 13, 15. Yeah, 13, 15. 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Mysteries goes back to things you shall hide with Moses and things you shall tell secretly to the wise. Go ahead. But, but to them it is not given. But to them, not everyone's going to understand that. Not everyone will understand that. Now, get Genesis 2 and 7. Genesis 2 verse 7. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Uh-huh. And man became a living soul. So you read that, okay, he made Adam from the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. Like, okay, okay, God gave Adam life. He formed him, gave him life. That's it. That's like an abbreviation. That's not, there's more to that than just what it's saying. But to those who are wise, will understand it. Get um, Jump down to verse 18 now. We'll get back to that. Verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Mm-hmm. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam mm-hmm. to see what he would call them. So Adam was given wisdom to do what? To name the animals. Go ahead. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Whatever Adam said on the earth, it was established in heaven because Adam on earth was a god, a ruler, a leader. Go ahead. Verse 20. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. Because the, every fowl and every beast of the field, they had a mate. They had a female counterpart. But Adam was alone at this time. Go ahead. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. So he took Adam, put him asleep, took his rib out, formed it into a woman. And, go, ahead, go ahead, read on. And brought, and, brought, and brought her to Adam. Go ahead. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Because that's, what, that's where she came from. Go ahead. She shall be called woman. So Adam named her now. He named the cattle, the beast. Now he names his, his woman, his wife. He calls her woman. Go ahead. Because she was taken out of man. Because woman means out of or of man. Go ahead. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. This is a marriage. This is marriage in the Bible. This is marriage here. Go ahead. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. They were not ashamed. Now, that's, that's another topic. Uh, get me Genesis 3, verse 1. Read on. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 1. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So you read that, oh, yeah. So the Christians go, yeah, there's a tree. It's an actual tree in the garden. They ate the tree, ate the apple, because they're not wise. That's not what it's talking about. That's why he said to those, some you, you publish, and to others, you hide. Then he goes to Ezra, you publish, but then you go and teach secretly to the wise. Those who are wise know this is going into. It's not talking about a little tree and actual fruit. It's talking about something else. Read on. 
And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. Go ahead. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Satan says to um, the woman, You won't die. Who told you that? Go ahead. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. He said, do you know, he said, see, what God wants you to know is that if you eat that, you'll be a god too. You'll be as gods, plural. You and your husband will be gods because that's what she wanted. Because in the back of her mind, that's what she wanted. She wanted to be equal with Adam. Because she watched Adam and was like, damn, look at him. He's naming the animals. I couldn't name animals too. I'm smart. Feminism. That's what that was. And Satan was like, got you. Go ahead. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. What fruit do you eat make you smart? It's not talking about literal fruit, but it's, it's an, a parable. It's a dark saying. This is in the law. This is Genesis. This is five books of Moses. This, this, is, this is a what? This is um, spoken what? It's hidden. It's a hidden. It's spoken in, in secret. Go ahead. She took up the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. And he, so Adam went and he ate also. Now, this is, again, process of time. This is not immediate. This is process of time. It's written in what? In brevity. It's written, it's an abridgment to what happened. When you, when you read from the prophets, they give you more explanation behind what happened back then. But in here, it's just written in brief. Go ahead. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they realized they messed up, is what it's saying. Go ahead. And they so that they were sinful. It was that they were sinful. Go ahead. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And then they were hot to hid themselves. Go ahead. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Hid themselves goes back to the sold themselves fig leaves and aprons. The same thing. Go ahead. Verse 9. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Where you, where you, where you at? God knew where he was. <laughs> Most I got a sense of humor. Where you at, Adam? What you doing? Go ahead. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked and hid myself, and I hid myself. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? So God says, who told you that you were naked? Who said that to you? I didn't tell you that. Go ahead. Has thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Go ahead. He wanted Adam to confess it. He wanted Adam to do what? Acknowledge his transgression, like David said earlier in Psalms. Because Adam messed up, but he wanted him to know it. Go ahead. And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. So Adam did not acknowledge it. Adam shifts the blame over to Eve. You gave me this woman. He said it to God, really. You gave me this woman. I messed up because of her. Go ahead. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? No, God went to Adam first. Now he's going to the woman now. Go ahead. What have you done? Go ahead. And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me. And I did eat. She shifts blame. Well, I, I, it's not my fault. The, the devil did it. Go ahead. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. You mean your, dom- your realm shall be the earth. You're going to have dominion over the earth. That's your station. You'll be on the earth. Go ahead. And I will put enmity, enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That's going another topic. It's going into Christ and so forth. Let's read on. Verse 16. It's a dark saying as well. Go ahead. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. And sorrow. Thou thou lab- labor pains, menstruation. Go ahead. And sorrow. Thou shalt bring forth children. Shall labor. Go ahead. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. And your desire shall be to your husband. Go ahead. And he shall rule over the because who ruled over Because who was her husband at first? It was Adam. Then who she wasn't followed? The devil. So God told her, listen, you're going to follow Adam. Don't follow nobody else. You're to follow Adam. You were made for him. Um, what verse is that? Verse 16. 17. Verse 17. And to Adam, and unto Adam he said. So he goes back to Adam again, who he went to initially. Go ahead. Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. You've listened to your wife. Go ahead. And hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it. Curse is the ground for thy sake. And sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So, Adam, you're going to work until you die. That's what he's saying. Life's going to be hard for you. Life's going to be real hard for you. Read on. Thorns also and thistles shall eat, bring forth to thee. Shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. 
In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. You work hard until you drop dead. Go ahead. For out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Came up from the earth, you're going to return right back to it again. Adam was immortal, was immortal at first. This is Adam dying. God's telling Adam you're going to die. You were immortal at first. You'd have messed that up now. You're going to die here now. You're going to work hard until you die, which we do today. We even inherited that blessing today, or curse today. Now, get 2nd Ezra 3 and 13 now. Let's get more an explanation of what happened in that, in that, during that time. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 3, verse 13. Yeah. Now, when they lived so wickedly before thee, Thou didst choose thee a man from among them, whose name was Abraham. Mm -hmm. Talk about Abraham. Go ahead. Whom thou lovest, and unto him only thou showest thy will. We showed Abraham his commandments. Go ahead. And madest an everlasting covenant with him, promising him that thou wouldst never forsake his seed. Go ahead. And unto him thou gavest Isaac, and unto Isaac also thou gavest Jacob and Esau. Mm -hmm. As for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee, and put and put by Isaac and, and put, Esau. And put Esau away. He, he got rid of Esau. The hell with him. Go ahead. And so Jacob became a great multitude. And it came to pass that when thou lettest his seed out of Egypt, thou broughtest them up to the Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. And bound the heavens, thou didst set fast the earth, movest the whole world, and madest the depths to tremble, and troubles the men of that age. Go ahead. And thy glory went through, and thy glory went through four gates of fire, and of earthquake, and of wind, and of cold. And thou mightest give the law unto the seed of Jacob. Uh -huh. you know. And diligence unto the generation of Israel. Come on. And yet took his thou not away from them a wicked heart. So God gave us laws, commandments. He promised us blessings passed on from Abraham, Isaac, and, and our forefather Jacob unto us. But he did not remove from us a what? A wicked heart. Go ahead. That thy law might bring forth fruit in them. That our law might bring forth fruit in us. Go ahead. Our, his law might bring forth fruit in us. Go ahead. Watch this. For the first Adam. For the first Adam. Adam. Go ahead. The original. Bearing a wicked heart. Bearing a what? A wicked heart. That goes back to when Adam said he's naked. Bearing a wicked heart. Bearing a wicked heart. So Ezra is elaborating on what was said in brevity in Genesis. When it says that Adam, was, they were naked. It means they were sinful. A wicked heart. Go ahead. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed. He transgressed by doing what? Listening to Eve and partaking of that fruit of, good, of that tree of good and evil. He learned what evil was. He learned what sin was. But to do that, Adam had to have sin within him or evil in him. Go ahead. And was overcome. And he was overcome. Why does it say overcome? Because when Eve went to Adam, it wasn't, it wasn't he listened to her immediately. It took time. She waited on him. Oh, come on. Let's learn about this. Let's learn this. Ah, nah, that's wrong. We shouldn't learn that. Come on, Adam. Let's just learn it. No, but over time, over time, she started listening to her. Okay, what, what you got over there? Okay, oh, okay, oh, wow. It was like, it was, of course, it was idolatry. So it took time. So he said he was overcome. Go ahead. And so be all they that are born of him. And so be all they who have a wicked heart and can be overcome that are born of Adam. Go ahead. Thus, infirmity was made permanent. And the law also. No, no, no. no I'm sorry. Step at 20. Get me. Was in Psalm 19, verse 6. Was in Psalm 19 and 6. I missed that part where it says he made a law for them. Hold on to that. It was in Psalm 19, verse 6. I went too far. That's all right. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 19, verse 6. For the whole creature in its proper kind was fashioned, fashioned again anew. The whole creature is the whole nation of Israel. We were fashioned again anew because we spent hundreds of years in Egypt. Learning their ways and their, and their customs and their traditions. And so we had to be what? Reborn, made again, fashioned again anew. Go ahead. Serving the peculiar commandments. Serving the peculiar commandments. Go ahead. That were given unto them that thy children might be kept without hurt. That we wouldn't be harmed. If we kept God's laws, we were protected. Go back to Ezra's again. And verse 20 one more time. The book of uh, Second Ezra, chapter 3, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And yet tookest thou not away from them a wicked heart, that thy law might bring forth fruit in them. 21 again. Go ahead. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed and was overcome. And so be all they that are born of him. Now, we're going to stay in that verse for a while. Give me Second Ezra 16 and 61. So stay in 3. 16, 61 now. He had a wicked heart and was overcome. 
1661. The book of Second Edges, chapter 16, verse 61. He made man and put his heart in the midst of the body. He made man and put and put his heart in the midst of the body. Go ahead. And gave him breath. Remember Genesis 2 and 7. He gave Adam breath. Go ahead. Life. He gave Adam the breath of life. Watch this. And understanding. That ain't written in Genesis. And gave him understanding. Because the breath of life that was given to him was understanding. It was life itself and understanding. Because God's laws is life. So Adam, Adam received God's laws or commandments that gave him life, wisdom. Now, go back to 321 again, 321. Go back there again. We're going to keep hitting it again and again. The book of 2nd Edgers, chapter 3, verse 21. Mm -hmm. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed and was overcome. Mm -hmm. And so be all they that are born of him. Get 711, same book, 711. The book of Second Edgers, chapter 7, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Because for their sakes I made the world. Be verse 10. Verse 10, sorry. With the context, it's all right. Verse 10, and I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. Even so also is Israel's portion. Watch this. Because for their sakes. Their sakes is Israel. For our, his, our sakes, go ahead. I made the world. God made the planet for us. Go ahead. And when Adam transgressed. When Adam did what? When Adam transgressed. Transgressed what? My statutes. Statutes. That's the breath, the life, and understanding that was given to Adam. Again, that's not in Genesis 2 and 7. It's more elaborate among the prophets. They explain it more. Go ahead. Then it was decreed that now is done. Then it was decreed that now is done means sin being within us. Go back to get uh, 321 again. I'm going to read it over and over again so you get it. 21 one more time. The book of 2nd Edges, chapter 3, verse 21. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed and was overcome. And so be all they that are born of him. Yes, sir. Now get chapter 7 again, 56 to 58. The book of 2nd Edges, chapter 56. No, I mean, chapter 7, seven verse 56. 56. Mm -hmm. For while we lived and committed iniquity, we considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. That's the second death. We shall begin to suffer for it. After death. We didn't consider it. We didn't care. Go ahead. Then answered he me and said, this is the condition of the battle. That's the part you want to deal with. This is the condition of the battle. What battle? The battle within us. All of us have a battle. You, me, everyone in this room, everyone watching online, even you hateful people online, there's a battle within you as well. This is All of us. Read again. Then answered he me and said, this is the condition of the battle. This is the condition of the battle. The condition of the battle. Go ahead. Which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. Which is born upon earth must fight. Remember it said, Adam was given a wicked heart, and so are all they that are born of him. Go ahead. That, oh, wait, wait. So I don't want, yes, 58. Read on. Verse 58. That, if he be overcome. Stop. Remember what happened to Adam? He had a wicked heart and was overcome. Happened with Adam also. Read on. He shall suffer as thou hast said. Go ahead. But if he get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I say. If he gets the victory, he shall receive what I say, the kingdom. Overcome means he falls and doesn't rise at all. He falls and stays down, and he's done. That's what it means by if, he, if, he's, uh, um, if he's overcome. Get me Romans 12 and 21. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. All right? So go back to, um, that goes back to 2nd to 7 earlier about being overcome. You must overcome good with the, um, evil. Come, you must overcome, I'm going to read again, read again. I'm butchering it. 21 again? Yes, sir. Be not overcome of evil. Go ahead. But overcome evil with good. Right, but overcome evil with good. Now, get um, Romans 7, 12. What's good? Two chapters over. Chapter 7, verse 12. For those who may be new. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 12. This is overcome evil with good. How, what, what good is he referring to? Verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. So the law is holy, the commandment is holy, and just, and and good. That's what the good is. That's how you overcome the evil with the good of the commandments. Now, get 
Second Ezra 3 again. Second Ezra 3, verse 22 now. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 3, verse 22. Mm-hmm. Thus, infirmity was made permanent. Thus, infirmity what? Was made permanent. So when Adam sinned, he made infirmity, or sin, he made it permanent. Go ahead. And the law also in the heart of the people with the malignity of the root, so that the good departed away and the evil abode still. Read 22 again. Slower. Thus, infirmity was made permanent. Thus, infirmity through Adam was passed on generational now. Generationally now. Go ahead. And the law also in the heart of the people. And the law was also passed down to, go ahead. With the malignity of the root. With the malignity of the root. Go ahead. So that the good departed away. So the, lo- the good is the law eventually departed from us because of that malignity, that evil that was in us, the wickedness. Go ahead. And the evil abode still. But the evil abode still. The law, the good, departed away. But the evil or the malignity of the root, meaning Adam's wickedness, which is the root of everything, it stayed in us. So what is, look up real quick, um, Google malignity. Malignity. It goes back to the word malignant. Look up malignant. The root of malignity is malignant. Malignant. M-A-L-I-G-N-A-N-T. Okay, get, look up malignant. M-A-L-I-G-N-A-N-A-N-T. Yeah, malignant. That's that one. Yep. There we go. It says malevolent. Read that. Malignant. Malevolent. 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 Malevolent means evil. Read some of synonyms. In the hands of malignant fate. Sim- uh, synonym. Spiteful. Hostile. Malevolent. Malicious. Malign. So the word malign goes back to the word malignant. Go ahead. Evil intention. Evil intention. Go ahead. Baleful. Full of hate. Full of hate. Vicious. Nasty. Poisonous. Venomous. A criminous. Uh, ran- rancorous, splenetic, cruel. Yes, splenetic, yep, cruel. Go down. Benevolent. With that. Um, of a disease, very virulent or infectious. Go click to see more. Is there more on that? At the see bottom more? right. It should be more. Let's just go down more. That's it. <clears throat> go down, go down, go down. We see something I want. There we go, right there. Go look up origin. Late Latin. Read that right there. Yes, sir. Origin. Mid 16th century, also in a sense, likely to re- uh, rebel against God. No, 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 the top, late uh, Latin, the late Latin right there. That's good too, but read that first. Okay, origin. Malignate, right? Malignare, malignare. Yeah, malignare. Uh huh. Late Latin, malignart. What does it say? C- uh, contriving, contriving maliciously. Malignant, what does it say there? Likely to what? Malignant, likely to rebel against God or authority. There you go. Likely to rebel against God or authority. That's what malignant means. Go back to 22 again, what Adam did. When Adam fell, he made everyone fall. When Adam fell, it put that evil in everybody, including the the people he would choose later on on the line through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Read 22 again. The book of 2nd Edges, chapter 3, verse 22. Thus, infirmity was made permanent. And the law also in the heart of the people. So the law was made not in, in the people also that came out of Adam. Go ahead. With the malignity of the root. With the root. With the sin that came from the beginning. So people came into the world with that same sinful nature that was in Adam and in Eve from the beginning. Go ahead. So that the good departed away. The good is the law of the heart departed out of the people. Go ahead. And the evil abode still. But the evil remained. The sinful nature remained in the people. Starting with what? Adam. The malign- he's the root of that malignity that was in all the people, the rebellion. Now, get um, Ezra 9, chapter 9, verse 18. And by the way, that's not in Genesis. That's why God asked him, who said that you are naked? Because Adam didn't know he was malignant. He didn't know I was in him. But once he took that, that damn tree, he learned, oh, damn, I'm not doing this. Oh, man, I'm sinful. He thought, he, thought he, was, he was good. He wasn't good. Not fully. 9 and verse 18. That's the problem with us. We think we're good, but we're not good. We're not. That's why Paul David said earlier, I had to acknowledge my sin. You have to acknowledge it. When you ignore it, don't pay attention to it, 
it will overcome you. You think you got it and you exalt yourself, and you're not hu- humble, you will be abased, like Christ said in Luke 18. Now, get Ezra 9, verse 18. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 9, verse 18. And now, when I prepared the world, which was not yet made, even for them to dwell in that now live, no man speak against me. So there's spirits that God has ordained or predestined to serve him from that time in the heavens, even unto that time on the earth. Read again. And now, when I prepared the world, which was not yet made, even for them to dwell in that now live, no man speak against me. Watch this, verse 19 is going to explain why. For then everyone obeyed. Because at that time in the spirit realm, everyone obeyed. We were all good, pure, holy. Go ahead. But now the manners of them which are created in this world. But now the manners of those same spirits I picked up there, that I, I, I chose or predestined in the heavens, they're on earth now, covered in this now, covered in this flesh now. Go ahead. That is made or corrupted by a perpetual seed. Or corrupted by what? A perpetual seed. A malignity of the root. Go ahead. And by a law which is unsearchable, rid themselves. Because that evil abode still. So in the heavens, we all obey, do what God say. But once it's sent on the earth and covered in this flesh here, that law, that good begins to corrode. It becomes corrupted based upon what, um, what was passed on through Adam. Now, get three and five. That's just three now. It says corrupted by perpetual seed. Get three and five. The book of Second Edges, chapter three, verse five. And gave us a body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thy hands, and this breathed into him the breath of life. There you go, watch. And he made and he was made living before thee. Uh-huh. And thou ledest him into paradise. Adam was in paradise. He was in the kingdom. Paradise on earth. Go ahead. Which thou right hand had planted. Which Christ had formed. Go ahead. Before ever the earth came forward. Before there was even <laughs> another topic. Before ever the earth came forward. Paradise. Paradise was formed first before the earth was, was formed. He prepared paradise before he made the earth. Okay, it's from the top. Okay. Read from the top? No, no, we don't. Verse 7. Oh, sorry. I'm going to take us somewhere else. Verse 7. And unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way, which he transgressed. And immediately thou appointest death in him. Immediately thou appointed, appointedest death in him. Watch this. And in his generation. And in his generations. Because that evil that was in him, it passed on th- down the line. It passed on. Go ahead. Of whom came nations. Of whom came nations. Tribes. Mm-hmm. People. And kindreds out of number. Adam made everybody. There were kindreds, tribes, nations, and people all over the earth out of Adam and his wife. The mother of all living. Go ahead. And every people walked after their own will. They began to do what? And every people walked after their own will. Because the malignity, the malignity of the root. Go ahead. And did wonderful things before thee, and despised thy commandments. The evil abode still. They began to neglect his laws, as that evil was in their heart. Go ahead. Verse 9. And again, in process of time, thou broughtest the flood upon those that dwelt in the world. It's okay, I gotta kill you guys now. That being ridiculous. I'm gonna kill you. Flood the earth. Go ahead. And destroys them. And it came to pass in every of them. Watch this. That as death was to Adam. So was the flood to thee. So the flood was catastrophic on the planet. So when Adam fell, that was also catastrophic to the earth too. He's comparing Adam's fall to the flood on the earth. It was very, very bad. Adam didn't just put out, okay, Adam, Eve, get out of here. They were cast out. No. Far worse things happened after that. Far worse. That's another class, though. Um, Where we at? Verse 11. No, get three again. Be 22 again. So the thought isn't forgotten. The book of Second Edges, chapter 3, verse 22. Thus, infirmity was made permanent, and the law also in the heart of the people, with the malignity of the root. Adam, go ahead. So that the good departed away, and the evil abode still. Right. Get, um, go to uh, Romans 5 now. Romans 5. Romans 5 and 12. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world. That's Adam. Go ahead. And death by sin. 
Mm-hmm. And so death passed upon all men. All men. All nations got to go ahead. For that all have sinned. Uh-huh. For unto the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. You touch it again. For unto the law, sin was in the world. For unto, for unto the law, sin was in the world. Go ahead. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Meaning, sin is not charged when there is no law or there's no death. Give me uh, Hebrews real quick. I'm going to take it somewhere else. Hebrews chapter 9 to explain this. I think it's Hebrews 9 and 20 something. 22. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. Right, read again. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. Go back to Romans 5 again. 13. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 13. For unto the law, sin was in the world. Law sacrifice, sin was in the world. Go ahead. But sin is not imputed. Sin is not acknowledged or accounted for. Go ahead. When there is no law. When there is no law, there is no law sacrifice. Because remember, under, under Moses, if you, under Moses, you have to have sacrifices. So there is no, there is no uh, sin or death when there's no sacrifice. Meaning, when Christ died on the cross, he took away that condemnation. He took that away. Read again, one more time. For until the law, sin was in the world. For until the law sacrificed, sin was in the world. Go ahead. But sin is not imputed. But sin is not charged. A person is not charged with death. Go ahead. When there is no law. When there is no sacrifice. Because under Moses, you got to put the death for that. If you committed certain, certain sins, you got to put the death. There was no remission of sins. That's what I said, that's what I said earlier in Hebrews 9. Almost all things are purged of blood. Almost. Because some things are not. Read on. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam. Death, sin, or death reigned from Adam to Moses. Go ahead. Even so over- the word death and sin are synonymous because one leads to the other. So those are synonymous terms. Death and sin are interchangeable. So when you read um, sin was in the world, that's death until it was in the world. Death is not imputed when there is no law or sacrifice. It's the same thing. It's interchangeable. Read 14 again. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, Go ahead. who is the figure of him that was to come. Jesus Christ. Go ahead. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead. Through the sense of Adam, many death was brought into the world. Go ahead. Both through Eve and Adam. Go ahead. Much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ have abounded unto many. So as much as sin and death has entered into the world, grace and mercy through Christ enters the world as well. More mercy and grace are offered, go ahead, through his death, go ahead. Verse 16, and not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. Christ but, is the gift, go ahead. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. So to Adam, the judgment was just death. That's condemnation goes back to death or sin, back in, Romans verse, back in verse 14, I mean 13, go ahead. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Because through Christ, all sins are, are, are forgiven. Not just some. Remember this earlier in Hebrews, Hebrews 9, almost all things are purged of blood. But through Christ, all things. Get Acts 13. Hold on to that. Get Acts 13 and 38 to clarify what that's talking about. The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 38. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Watch this, watch this. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things. From what? From all things. From what? From all things. All things. Justi- justified from all things. Watch this. From which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Because under Moses, you're not under all things. You get put to death in certain things. Idolatry, adultery, um, witchcraft, homosexuality. You get death under Moses for that. There's no remission. Whatsoever. Go back. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 17. For if by one man's offense, Adams, death reigned by one, mm-hmm. much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men Adam, to, to condemnation. To death, go ahead, sin, go ahead. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men 
unto justification of life. So they'll see that and go, all men, see? All men. Hold on to that. Get Isaiah 45 and 25. See, that's going into. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 25. And the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be shall who? Shall all the seed of Israel. That's the all men. Go ahead. Be justified. Be justified through Jesus Christ. Go and back to go back to Romans 5 again. All men. All men. You Christians out there, you gotta stop this, please. I'm not talking about you. <laughs> the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Adam brought death into the world upon all men. Go ahead. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Go ahead. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So, by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Go ahead. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. So, where sin and death came in and abounded, grace and mercy came in abounded even more. Go ahead. That as sin have reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Right. So now, get me chapter 7, verse 5. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 5. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins which were by the law did work. And our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Right, remember earlier he said the, mal the malignity of the root. The malignity of the root. Same thing. Read verse 5 again. For when we were in the flesh. Notice he's saying when we. He's not talking to all of us. He's talking to the people he's writing to are Israelites. Israelites in Rome. Read verse 1, please, to clear it up. Just to clear it up. So don't know. Romans 7. Just jump to verse 1. Romans 7 to 1. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 1. No, know ye, not brethren. For I speak to them that know the law. Read it again. Know ye not, brethren. For I speak to them that know the law. So Paul says, know ye not, brethren. For I speak to them that know the law. He was writing to his own people in the synagogues of Rome. When you read the end of Acts, chapter, the book of Acts, his conversation ends with him right, him being locked up and him being receiving visits from the, the, um, the Israelites that had schools in Rome. He was writing to them. He's talking to them, not talking to everyone. Jump to verse 5 now. Verse 5. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Right. We, we were prone to what? To rebel against God, the malignity. That's what he's going into. Go ahead. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held. The law is going into the law of sacrifice. Go ahead. That we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Now hold, hold on to that because Christians going to run with that. Hold, Hebrews 10, Hebrews 10, verse 1. They're going to say I'm skipping past it on purpose because I don't know what I'm talking about. Hebrews 10, verse 1. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 1. But now we are delivered from the law, it says, that being dead we were held. Hold on to read that. For the law having a shadow of good things the to what? come. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. Uh-huh. And not the very image of the things can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Uh -huh. So it's going into the sacrifices. The law is referring to the sacrifices. Go ahead. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that they that the worshippers once purged shall have had no more conscience of sins. Read on verse three. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. Verse four. For it is not possible that the blood of that the blood of bulls and of goats shall take away sin. So the the law in Romans is referring to the law of sacrifice, not the commandments. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. I mean, that doesn't make any sense at all. That makes no sense at all. Romans five again. Tell me Romans seven Romans again. Seven. Yeah, the book of Romans chapter seven, uh, verse six. But now we are delivered from the law of sacrifice. That being dead, wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit. Newness of spirit, go ahead. And not in the oldness of the letter. Sacrifice, go ahead. Newness of spirit is Christ, not in sacrifice of animals, go ahead. What shall we say then? What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Sacrifice is law sin, go ahead. God forbid. No, it's not sin, go ahead. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. 
Paul said, I would not have known what sin was except by the law. Go ahead. For I had not known lust except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. Because thou shalt not covet means thou shalt not lust. It's the same thing. Read on. Verse 8. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wroth in me all manner of concupiscence. So as I said earlier, Paul was an open book. And Paul made it clear he battled the law, the spirit of concupiscence. Look at that word up real fast. It's not a regular Negro word. C-O-N-C-U-P-I-S-C-E-N-C-E. -E. Concupiscence. It's the state of being concupiscent. Y'all got it? Concupiscence. Strong desire. Strong desire, especially sexual desire. So Paul had, was battling strong sexual desire. That was his battle. Go back to verse 8 again. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 8. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wroth in me, all The commandment he's referring to is the, the law of that flesh. You have a sinful commandment in you, and you have the law's commandments in you. The law, the laws of sin, laws of, laws of the flesh, as in evil here, evil, sin. Simple nature, and you have God's laws. Read it, read it again. But sin, taken occasion by the commandment, wroth in me all manner of concupiscence. Go ahead. For without the law, sin was dead. Without the law, sin was dead. Go ahead. For I, for I was alive without the law once. I was alive without the law of, of, of um, go ahead, once. Go ahead. But when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. Read verse 9 again. For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Then he, he, he learned Christ. He realized, okay, I'm sinful. The same way Adam realized it. He acknowledged his sin. Because remember, Paul was raised in, born and raised a Pharisee. So when Paul came to the knowledge of Christ, he realized in the, in the, in the law, you know, I'm sinful too. He acknowledged it. Read on. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. And I realize the commandment that's ordained to life, I realize it, that I'm worthy of death. Go ahead. I'm sinful. Go ahead. For sin taken occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. I didn't, I didn't realize it. I, re I didn't realize I was sinful. Go ahead. Now you're starting to understand it now. Go ahead. Verse 12. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might be become might become exceeding sin. So the more he began to apply the laws in Christ, the more that sin within him became apparent. It was more he was more exposed to. Remember, Paul was a, was was well versed in the laws of commandments, but when he started to learn Christ, when Christ revealed Himself to him and started teaching him, he realized how sinful of, in nature he was. And the more he learned in Christ, the more the more that sinful nature was revealed to him. Go ahead. So, the, so that's why I said earlier in Esdras, um, this is the condition of the what? The battle. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Go ahead. Read it again. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Where's that earlier? Read that earlier. Where is that? You know what that is? Who knows what that is? You read this earlier. Someone said this before. I don't want to give it away. Who has not idea where this came from, this statement came from? Where he says, but we know the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold into sin. Who knows what that is? You don't have an idea? I know you know. I know. <laughs> somebody doesn't, who doesn't know. Put the mic in somebody's hand. Who knows? You read it earlier. What does this call? What does this call? All right, go ahead. Uh, Psalms 51 and 5. Right, what does it say? Um, uh, verse, uh, yeah, 5. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Right, exactly. That's what David said, the exact same thing. Because that was in David, too. You didn't see it until he got exposed. Read it. Read it again. Romans 7. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Go ahead. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Okay, we had it again. <laughs> this just starts getting difficult. Starts sounding. Like, 
<laughs> it's a parable. Read 15 again. Tongue twisted. Yeah. For that which I do, I allow not. For that which I, the, the sin that's in me, I don't allow it. I don't, I don't give into it. Go ahead. For what I would, that do I do. I'm sorry. For what I would, that for, do I not. For what I would, that do I not. What I want to do, what the flesh wants you to do, I won't do it. Go ahead. But what I hate, that do I. But the desire, that, that lascivious, that, that concupiscent spirit is still there. Even when I fight it, it's still there. Go ahead. If then I do that which I would not. If I do what I should not do, go ahead. I consent unto the law that it is good. Because, it's, because the law keeps me from doing what my flesh wants to do. Go ahead. Now, then it is no more I that do it. It's not me that, it's not that I want to do it. Go ahead. But sin that dwelleth in me. But this flesh that's on me makes me want to do it. Go ahead. For I know that in me that is in my flesh. So he explains it. That if it's in me that is my flesh. Go ahead. Dwelleth no good thing. There's no good thing in this flesh here. Nothing good at all. Go ahead. For to will is present with me. For the, 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 the will to do good is present with me all the time. Keeping God's laws. Go ahead. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. How to fight it, I can't explain to you. You got to figure it out on your own. You're on your own at this point. I'm battling myself, so you got to figure it out too. You got to figure out a battle on your own, is what Paul is saying. Go ahead. For the good that I would, I do not. For the good that I would, I don't do. The good that I would is try to, try to not think these evil thoughts, but I, I, I can't. I do it. It comes to me. Go ahead. But the evil which I would not, that I do. The evil that I would, that I would, that I would rather not um, have in me is there. The concupiscence is there. Go ahead. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it. But sin that dwelleth in me. Or that manner of concupiscence, this flesh that's on me, makes me want to do it. Go ahead. I, I find then a law that when I would do good. I find then a law that when I do good, go ahead. Evil is present with me. The, the law he's referring to is the evil in your spirit, the evil in your flesh. That's the law he's referring to. Go ahead. Verse 22. When I do good things, he's saying, the more I realize when I do good, righteous, that evil comes to me more. The stronger I become spiritually, the more the flesh gets stronger too. There's a battle. Go ahead. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man is Christ. Go ahead. But I see another law in my members. But I see another law, which is the law of the flesh, that sinful nature, in my members, in my flesh, in me, in my mind. Go ahead. Warring against the law of my mind. Doing what? Warring against the law of my mind. What law is in his mind? The commandments. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not bear false witness. There's a law, you have the law in your flesh, that's that root of evil that's in you, the law that says, do what you want to do. Do what you feel. Do what thou wilt. Have fun. You're young. Do your thing. That's, a, that's your law. That's the law in your flesh talking to you. That right, man, he hates me. He, he ain't no good. I, I, don't like, I don't like him. Why you got to have that car? I should take that car. Why you got to have a wife for? I should, I should take his wife. That's the law of the flesh talking. So you have the law of the spirit talking, and you have the law of the flesh talking. Which one's going to win? Paul says that that's up to you. I'm battling it myself. I can't tell you how to overcome that. But that's, it's there. That battle is there. It's constant. And it will always be there. Read on. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Read 23 again. But I see an, another law in my members. In my flesh, my members. Go ahead. Warring against the law of my mind. Warring against the law of my mind. I mean, my, the spirit. Go ahead. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. And bringing me back to those same evil thoughts of concupiscence that I keep fighting off every day. I'll, I'll th think about the commandments of God. Then I think about porn. Think about the commandments of God. I think about stealing. Think about the commandments of God. I think about adultery. I think about the commandments of God. I think about idolatry. It's, con it's a constant battle. Over and over, it's terrible, but it's, it's there. And when you acknowledge it, it makes it somewhat easier to deal with. But when you ignore it and go, ah, nah, it's not that bad. Ah, I'll, be, I'll be okay. I'm good. That's when it gets worse because you're ignoring it now. It's like a, the analogy would be like a, you, you have a, a, a pipe with a leak. You go, ah, not that bad. I'll put a band let, me, let me get a Band-Aid, put it on there. That's good. Man, that thing, eventually that thing starts to grow a leak, and it bursts. Now you messed the show. Well, did it closed. The laws of God is the weld. But your ignorance is like, nah, I'm good. I'll just put some tape on it. It'll be all right. Put some rubber dusting on it. That'll be all right. No, 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 no. No, no. Read on. That's not going to help. Read on. Verse 24. Oh, wretched man that I am. Here we go. It's part of the class. Oh, wretched man that I am. Go ahead. 
Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? The body of this what? Of this death. This flesh is death. And as long as you're covered in this, you will eventually die. You'll either grow old or you are vulnerable to be healed. The body of this death is what he's saying. Go ahead. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. What does Paul do, he said? What does Paul say he does? So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. What the law's done away with. <laughs> Read it again. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. Paul is telling you he keeps the commandments. Get around that, Christians. Get around that. You don't need to try to use Romans 5 somehow. But Romans 7 says, read it again. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. Because to fight off that man of concupiscence, he had to apply the laws of God. In the spirit of Christ, he had to. Go ahead. But with the flesh, the law of sin. But in the flesh, there's a what? A law of what? Sin. There's a law of sin too. You have laws in your flesh and you have laws in the spirit. Which one you feed is up to you. That's where the battle comes in. Give me um, Ezekiel 11. Verse 19. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 11, verse 19. Yes, I want. Yep, that's it. And I will give them one heart. I will give them one heart. Go ahead. And I will put a new spirit within you. I will put a new spirit within you. Go ahead. And I will take the stony heart out of their flesh. The stony heart is the, the malignity of the root, that, that hard-headedness, that hard-headed spirit you have where the law says do one thing, but the, the flesh says, nah, I don't want to do that no more. Keep a Sabbath day. About, I want to buy stuff. Don't steal, but I want it. That's the law of the flesh talking. You can't have that. Why not? Don't do that. Why? The law says so. So, why not? That's the law of the flesh talking. Brother, do so-and-so. He didn't tell me what to do. He ain't my father. It's the law of the flesh talking. The bitterness, the envy, the lust, the, the, the idolatry, the adultery, the covetousness, all of that is the law of the flesh. Which one you feed is entirely up to you. Go ahead. And I, will and I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. Go ahead. And I will take the stony heart out of their the flesh. The stony heart is that, that, this flesh, this is the stony heart. This, this, this whole thing here is the stony heart, the flesh here. Go ahead. And I will give them a heart of flesh. And I will give you a flesh, a heart of flesh, meaning a, a heart that allows you to keep his laws perfectly. As long as you're stony, it's hard to get in. It's vulnerable. You can't get in there. It's adamant. It's rough. You can't. You can't take a needle and put it in the rock. It ain't going to go through. So but if, he puts a, uh, if you replace it with a fleshy heart, now the Lord's and Spirit can go into you now. It's harder for it to you when you have a stony heart. But when the Most High gives us the kingdom, we'll have a fleshy heart. You'll be able to receive God's laws and be what? Perfect. Without blemish. Perfect. Read verse 20. That they may walk in my statutes mm -hmm. and keep my ordinances and do them. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. Right. Um, get, um, 36 verse 26, same book. 36 verse 26. He says it again. 36 verse 26. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 26. A new heart also will I give you, mm -hmm. and a new spirit will I put read, with Read verse 24 to, to get, bring the point. So it'll show when, it'll show, it'll show when this happens. It's not now. 24. Yes, sir. Verse 24, for I will take you from among the heathen. That's deliverance. Go ahead. And gather you out of all countries. That's when we gather. Out, we get deliverance. Go ahead. And we'll bring you into your own land. That ain't now. Go ahead. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. That's his commandments. So sprinkle clean water upon us. Wash us up. Clean us up. Go ahead. And you shall be clean. And you shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Verse 26 now. A new heart also will I give you. Mm -hmm. And a new spirit I will put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. 27. And I will put my spirit within you. See that? And I will put my spirit within you. You can't put it in us now because this, this flesh here, this stoniness, this stony heart is in us. Go ahead. And cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Okay. Give me Sirach 17, 16. Ecclesiasticus 17, verse 16. The 
book of Sirach, chapter 17, verse 16. Watch what he says here. Every man from his youth is given to evil. Where is that earlier? That was in Romans 7, and that was in Psalms of David. Read it again. Every man from his youth is given to evil. Every man from his birth is given to evil because they're covered in what? The stony heart, this flesh here. Go ahead. Neither could they make to themselves fleshy, uh, fleshy hearts for stony. We could not make to ourselves fleshy hearts for stony because we're sinful. So the Spirit of the Lord enters into us, but it can't enter us fully. That's where the battle comes in because you, you have two spirits inhabiting you. The flesh on one side, the spirit on the other. So you can't get the full spirit yet until this flesh is removed entirely. Then you get the whole spirit entirely in you. There is no battle. There is, there is no war. It's over. There's no stone there anymore. Now it's just all flesh now. The spiritual flesh, the white, the white garment pretty much. So it's going into the white robes, the new body. That's the fleshy body is going into. Give me Romans 7, 23 again. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 23. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, mm -hmm. and bringing me into captivity. Read, read again, read again, one time. Yes, sir. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. I see a law in my members. That's the sinful laws in you. That's the do what you want, adultery, covetousness, stealing, lying, hatred, bitterness, anger, wrath, violence. That's the law of the flesh in you. Read again. But I see another law in my members. That's the law of your members, the law in your members. The members is your, your, your head, your, your arms, your, your feet, your flesh, your body. Go ahead. Warring against the law of my mind. Warring against the laws of God, the commandments of God, and the faith of Christ that should be where? In your mind. If the law is in your mind, that means you got to do what? Keep them. Apply them. Go ahead. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Which is in my members. Bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So the laws of God keep Paul focused against the laws in his members. Now, get second just again. We're going to read it one more time. Just to, second just 757 regarding the warring. So I got Ezra 7, 57, and 58 again. The book of 2nd Edges, chapter 7, verse 57. Then answered he me and said, This is the condition of the battle, mm -hmm. which man that is born upon the earth shall fight, that if he be overcome, he shall suffer, as thou hast said. Mm -hmm. If he gives in, he shall suffer. Go ahead. But if he get the victory. If he gets the victory, if he wins that battle of himself. Go ahead. Because the battle starts with you first. Go ahead. He shall receive the thing that I say. He shall receive the fleshy heart instead of, instead of keeping the stony one and dying in it. The stony one. Now, get Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. He elaborates on it a little bit more. The book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. Read it again. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. The flesh is the law in your members. Go ahead. And the spirit against the flesh. The spirit is the laws that were in Paul's mind. The spirit of Christ. The laws in the spirit of Christ. Go ahead. And these are contrary. The one to the other. You can't have. These are contrary one to the other. It's like oil and water. They're not going to mix. These are contrary one to the other. Contrary one to the other. Go ahead. So that you cannot do the things that ye would. Read against so that what? So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Because oftentimes brothers ask, well, how come I can't progress? How come I can't um, um, move? How come, how come I'm, I've been the truth for six, seven, eight, nine years, but I, can, I, I haven't progressed? Because there's something in you that's not allowing you to move forward. And you're, not, you're not acknowledging it. In order, for you to, in order for you to evolve and grow more in this faith, you must acknowledge what your faults are. What laws, are, what laws are in your members? The laws as in what sins are in your members? What are you battling with? Is it porn? Is it adultery? Is it stealing? Is it lying? Is it hatred? Is it pride? Is it ego? Is it arrogance? Is it um, idolatry? Idolatry could be a, a number of things. Idolatry isn't just witchcraft and casting a spell. It could be um, your, your wife, your, your baby moms. It could be your baby father. It could be your wife. It could be your husband. 
It could be your kids. It could be your family members. They celebrate Christmas. Ah, oh, man, I want to spend time with them. I love my family. That could be your idol. It could be your car. It could be your job. It could be a number. Idolatry falls into a whole number of things. It's not just witchcraft or other gods. Other gods can be you. Sometimes your god is you. You do what you want to do. You are your own god. I do what I want. I do. I say what I want. I feel what I want. I don't care what anyone says. What I might. What I say goes. You become your own god. So the problem could be you. Read the again. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other. These are contrary one to the other. Go ahead. So that you cannot do the things that ye would. So, you, so that you cannot do, keep the commandments the way you should keep the commandments. Because you balance that stuff. Go ahead. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. But under the law of what? Sacrifice. Under the law of sacrifice. As Paul said earlier, he did what? He kept the laws where? In his mind. So it can't be, you're going to keep the commandments. Because I've already said keep the commandments in Romans. Paul wasn't crazy. There's a law of sacrifice here. Read verse 18 again. Verse 18. But if ye be led of the Spirit. If you're led of the Spirit in Christ. Go ahead. Ye are not under the law. Of sacrifice because Christ did away with the law of sacrifice. Now, get wisdom of Psalm 915 regarding the battle. Wisdom of Psalm 915. Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 15. For the corruptible body presseth down the soul. For the what? For the corruptible body presseth down the soul. For the corruptible body, for the corruptible body presseth down the soul. That goes back to what Paul was saying in Romans 7 about the, um, the law of his members weighing heavy on, his, on, on the law of his mind. It's the same thing in Galatians 5, 17. Solomon said the same thing. Read again. For the corruptible body presseth down the soul. Go ahead. And the earthy tabernacle. The earthy tabernacle is what? What is the earthy tabernacle? Who knows? Anyone know what the earthy tabernacle is? The earthy tabernacle? Give it a try. I want to talk all night now, all day. Get some answers. What is the earthy tabernacle? Just give it a shot. Come on. Yeah, put the mic in somebody's hand. You know, you're wrong, you're wrong. What is the earthy tabernacle? Let's give it a, let's give it a shot. Give right here in front. Basically, um, being of the seed of man, being um, fleshly. Thank being you. Of our fleshly. Body. It's the body. Earthy tabernacle is your earthly body. This flesh is the earthy tabernacle. The earthy tabernacle. Go ahead. For the corruptible body presseth down the soul, and the earthy tabernacle. So the earthy tabernacle is what? The corruptible body. It's the same thing. Go ahead. Weighs down the mind. It weighs down what? The mind. As opposed to the moment seven. It weighs down the mind. Go ahead. That music upon many things. Because your mind, because what happens in the flesh, your mind, your thoughts wander everywhere. Why do I think about that for? Why did that cross my mind for? What the hell is this? It'll be a stupid thought. Where did that come from? I'm watching the news. I'm, talking, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about porn. What just happened? You all, your mind is all over the place. Because that, this, this stony is the flesh here. The earth, the stony and earthy is the same thing. Because the earth is what? The earth is a giant, they call it the big rock, the third rock from the sun. The stony is the flesh. I mean, it's the earthy. Stony heart, earthly heart, earthly tabernacle is all the same thing. We're made of the earth. So we're stony, stone-hearted, hard-headed, hard-hearted, rebellious by nature, malignant by nature because we're covered in this. Read again from the top, 15. Yes, sir. For the corruptible body presseth down the soul. Go ahead. And the earthy tabernacle weigheth down the mind that museth upon many things. Good, um, 1 Peter 2.11. 1 Peter 2.11. Book of 1 Peter's. 2.11. Chapter 2, verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, mm -hmm. which war against the soul. Abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. 
understand you have fleshy lust, you have to acknowledge the lust itself. If you don't, it'll, you're going to lose that battle. You'll lose it. Read again. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Which war against the soul. Now, get Romans 5 and 24 again. Romans 5, 24. read it earlier. I'm going to read it again. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 24. No, Romans 5, 24. It's not 5, 24. 7, I'm sorry. It's not 24. I said 5. The book I of go, Romans. I, go, I have 5 written here. It's wrong. Yeah, 724. Go ahead. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 24. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Read again. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? This earthy tabernacle, this stony heart. This corruptible body, who shall save me from it, Paul is saying. Because I got to walk around in this flesh that's, and it's a battle every day. It's terrible. Get Philippians 3 and 21. You get Malachi, I touched on this, I think, last week. It's a great class. The book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 21. Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body? Damn, read it again. Who shall change our vile body? Stop. Who shall change our vile body? He went from being stony, earthy, um, corruptible. He says wretched. Now he says vile. Vile body. Why is it vile? Hold on to that. Get Mark 7 real quick. Mark 7, 21. What makes it vile? The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men. Out of the what? Out of the heart of men. Stony heart. Earthy tabernacle. Corruptible body. Wretched man. Vile body. Read again. For from within. The flesh, like Paul said in Romans 7. Out of the heart of men. Out of the heart of men, the mind of men. Go ahead. Proceed evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. Go ahead. Adulteries. Adulteries. Fornications. Fornications. Murders. Murders in your heart. Hatred. Go ahead. Thefts. You're a thief. Covetousness. You are lustful. Covetous. Go ahead. Wickedness. Wickedness. Deceit. Uh huh. Lasciviousness. Concupiscence. Same word. An evil eye. Hatred for your brother or sister. Blasphemy. You lie or you're a filthy liar. Pride. Pride is in you. Ego. Arrogance. I'm going to follow instructions. I can do what I want to do. That's pride. Go ahead. Foolishness. Foolishness. All these evil things come from within. And what? And defile the man. There you go. So Christ said the exact same thing. Christ said the exact same thing that he said. He said it himself and said it through Paul in the spirit and through um, Solomon. Philippians again, read 21. The book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 21. Who shall change our vile body? Who shall change our vile body? Go ahead. That it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. That it may be fashioned unto his, Christ's glorious body. Into that fleshy for stone, that, that's fleshy for stony. Go ahead. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Damn, read it again, that part again. <laughs> According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things. Stop, right there. With the glorious body, you can subdue everything. Your body, your, there's no, no more lust now. There's no battle. The battle is over. You can subdue your own thoughts, your own body, your own spirit, and everyone else on the earth. You can subdue yourself with that glorious body. You can subdue the planet with that body. That's what, that's what Paul is saying here. Read it from the top again. Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body? Unto Christ's body. Go ahead. According to the working whereby. He is able even to subdue all things unto himself. All things is going into your mind, your spirit, your body, and everyone else on the earth. You can subdue. Because the battle starts with you first. And once you overcome and fight your battle within you until Christ returns, then you're good. You can fight everybody else. Get um. Mar oh, I said it, I read it already. Give Galatians 5.19. Galatians 5.19 now. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 19. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest. The works goes back to what? The law of the flesh 
for the law of your members. Back in Romans 7. Go ahead. Which are these? Which are these? Adultery. Adultery is a law of the flesh. Fornication. A law of the flesh. Uncleanness. A law, or, or a, law, a law of the members, the flesh, same thing. Go ahead. Lasciviousness. That's what Christ said earlier. These things in the heart of man. Go ahead. Idolatry. Mm -hmm. Witchcraft. Hatred. Variance. Emulations. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation are all. Uh, Paul wrote it in this way for a reason. Because all these things interconnect. Read verse 19 again. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication. Those two linked together. Uncleanness. Links together. Lasciviousness. Goes back to adultery and fornication. Go ahead. Idolatry. Idolatry is one. Witchcraft. Which goes back to idolatry, witchcraft. Hatred. Hatred goes back to witchcraft. How? Hold on to that. Get 1 Samuel 15, 23. How does hatred go back to witchcraft and idolatry? How is that possible? 1 Samuel 15, 23, to show how hatred, idolatry, and witchcraft go all together at one time. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, verse 23. This goes back to what Eve did in the garden. It ties back to her and our sisters now. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. For rebellion is as what? Is, is as the sin of witchcraft. Go ahead. And stubbornness. And stubbornness. Go ahead. Is as iniquity and idolatry. Go ahead. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. You hate God's words. He have also rejected thee from being king. So when you hate God's words, you're being stubborn and you're being rebellious. This goes back to witchcraft and idolatry. It all goes together. Go back to Galatians 5 again. The book of Galatians. Chapter, 5 and 20. Chapter 5, verse 20. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. All go together. Variance. Variance goes into competition. Whatever you know, I know more. Emulations. Whatever you can do, I can do better. It goes back to hatred. It goes back to idolatry because you become your own God. You're self-serving. I know more than him. I should be in his seat. You will become your own God. You become your own leader. Read it from the top again. 20 again. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Hatred. Variance. Emulations. Wrath. Strife. Seditions. Heresy. All, all that goes right back to witchcraft and idolatry. Heresy, sedition, strife, wrath, emulation, same thing. Go ahead. Envying. Envying is secret hatred. Murders. Which leads to murder. Tied together. Drunkenness. Reveling. Drunkenness e goes back to being envious at, uh, or hateful or battling something. Go ahead. Uh, uh, reveling. Revelings goes back, goes back to drunkenness because you go reveling at a club or party, they sell what? Drinks. It all tied together. Go ahead. And such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you, do such in nope. time past. No, read again. Read again. Envians, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So, we don't. You know, give me um no. Give me Matthew twenty six verse forty one. Matthew 26, verse 41. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 41. Let me get there. Hold on, let me get there. Okay, go ahead. Read it. Watch and pray. That no, read verse 40. Verse 40. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth, and findeth them asleep. He told them to stay awake. He told them to stay awake for him real fast. He told me, he said, you guys stay awake. But they, but they fell asleep. Go ahead. And saith unto Peter. What? Could you not watch with me one hour? 41. Watch and pray. Be mindful and pray. Go ahead. That you enter not into temptation. Because that, that's in you. That's in all of us. Temptation is in every one of us. Go ahead. The spirit indeed is willing. The spirit tells you, don't do that. Go ahead. But the flesh is weak. But the flesh tells you, there's nothing wrong with doing it. That's why the Lord, Adam told Eve, you can't eat that tree. What does Satan say? Who told you that? You will not. Oh, um, God said, if you eat that tree, you'll die. What did Satan say? You won't die. That's who's in your mind when you hear those things. You see $100, you see $100, someone, you see a brother walk, walk in front of you, money fall out of his pocket. Satan goes, hey, he dropped it. I mean, he don't say, I mean, if he got $100, you sure he got more money. I'll take it. You, you got rent, you got rent just due. You know, you lost your job. You'll take it. No one sees you. It's just me and him. The spirit's like, hey, God should not steal. Now, which one you choose is up to you. 
But you may you may take that hundred dollars and go. I'll, I'll take it. I'll keep it. I won't do that again. But you will, in some way or another. It'll evolve. It'll grow. Whichever one you feed is the one that'll win. That's how it goes. Read Romans six and twelve. The book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 12. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body. Like I said earlier, whichever one you let win, so it's up to you. Read again. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body. Go ahead. That you, shall, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Go ahead. Read on. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of up unrighteousness unto sin. Don't give in to those things. Go ahead. But yield yourselves unto God mm-hmm. as those that are alive from the dead. And your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. You got to pick one, which one you're going to serve. You law the Lord of flesh, law your members, or the laws in Christ. Go ahead. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law. Sacrifice. But under grace. Under mercy. Because Christ granted us mercy that we cannot receive under the laws of sacrifice. Go ahead. What then? Shall we sin? Because what, th- what then? Go ahead. Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law. But under grace? So what then? Can we sin because we no longer require animal sacrifice? Go ahead. God forbid. No, we cannot. Go ahead. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Read verse 15 again. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? So shall we sin because we're under no longer under the law of sacrifice, but under Christ now? Go ahead. God forbid. He says no. You still got to keep the commandments. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey. His servants ye, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. Go ahead. Whether of sin unto death. So if you choose to follow behind your flesh, you serve your flesh. That's your God. Your God is you. Go ahead. Or of obedience or unto spirit, righteousness. Or the spirit of Christ. You serve the spirit of Christ. In keeping his commandments, which is righteousness. Go ahead. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine, which was delivered you. That doctrine is the commandments. Hold that, get Proverbs 4 and 2. That form of doctrine. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 2. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. That's what he's talking about. I give you good doctrine, do not forsake my law. Go back. The book of mm-hmm. Romans, chapter 6, verse 7. We're gonna 17. Stop, we're going to stop at 19. Yes, sir. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form, the, of, that form of doctrine, which was delivered you. He says that is God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed the doctrine. I mean, they changed. Go ahead, verse 18. Being then made free from sin. From death. Ye became the servants of righteousness. The commandments. Hold on to that. Give me um, righteousness. Give me Deuteronomy 6.25. Yeah. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness. Our what? And it shall be our righteousness. It shall be our righteousness. Go ahead. If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he have commanded us. Right. So righteousness is what? The commandments of God. Go back to Romans 6 and verse 18. 18, 18, 18 now. 19 now. The book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 19. I speak after the manner of men. Because of the infirmity of your flesh. Because of the what? Because of the infirmity of your flesh. Paul is saying, I'm speaking as a man because of the infirmity in your flesh. I had the same thing in me. Paul was an open book. Go ahead. For as ye have yielded your member servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield, yield your member servants to righteousness unto holiness. Right. So I want. Give me Romans 8 now, verse 1. So Paul, so these men that were following letters of Paul, the disciples of follow, that were following letters of Paul and so forth, learned that they had a law in their flesh and a law in the spirit of Christ, in their mind. And they had to, they had to have, it was a battle ahead of them. And Paul was constantly reminding them over and over again that battle is going to be there until Christ, until Christ returns or until you pass on. 
Romans 8, verse 1. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 1. There, there is, therefore, now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. There's no condemnation means there's no um, death. Go ahead. Remember, under animal sacrifice, you receive what? Condemnation. Go ahead. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death is you sin, you die. Under Moses, certain animals cannot um, grant you penance. You got death. Okay, read on. Verse 3. So the law of sin and death is what? The law of what? Sacrifice. The law of sin and death is the law of sacrifice. Do y'all understand that? Who does not understand that? Who does understand it? Who does understand that? Okay, go ahead. Verse 3. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh. God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Read verse 3 again. 3 is a, a, a bit. It's a lot. Read again. For what the law could not do. What the law of sacrifice could not do for Israel. Go ahead. In that it was weak through the flesh. It was weak through the flesh because Israel would offer animals and go and sin again anyway. So he was saying through the flesh, our flesh, it was weak. Those sacrifices were weak. They were temporary. Go ahead. God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. God sent Christ in the likeness of that same flesh that we're in now. Go ahead. And for sin, <laughs> condemned sin in the flesh. And for our sin, he was able to remove sin in the flesh, meaning he was able to what? Remove death in the flesh. Remove death from us, the law of sin and death from us back in verse 2. Condem he was able to remove condemnation from us when it says remove sin. Condemned sin or con he, he um, removed condemnation from us. You understand? So when Christ died on the cross, he removed. Well, let me get back real quick. Some of y'all got puzzled. Hebrews uh, 10. Real quick. Hebrews 10 and verse. What do I want? Hebrews 10 verse 28. Read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 28. Watch this. He that despised Moses' law. Read it again. He that despised Moses' law. He that despised Moses' law. He that despised Moses' law or transgressed the one against Moses' law. Go ahead. Died without mercy. Died what? Without mercy. Died what? Without mercy. He died without grace. Or he died without mercy. Why? Read on. Under two or three witnesses. Why did we die without mercy under Moses? Who has the answer? I want to call it out. I want to see who has it. Why did he who despised Moses' law die without mercy? Mike, Mike. Yes. Shalom. Shalom. Uh, because it was the... It was the law. There was no uh, for certain law. Uh, for certain laws, you broke. There were no, no what? There were no sacrifices for them. exactly. You had to die. You had to go. There was no mercy. I'm just no. I'm sorry. I repent. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to to, to perform witchcraft. Nah, you gotta go. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to have, to have sex with the goat. Nah, you gotta go. There's no animal for that. You gotta go. You gotta. It's a rat. There's no goat sex here. You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. You can't do that. Can mess around and no, no. Let it go. So there was no mercy. There was no mercy by under that, for that. You got put to death. No witch breaking the Sabbath, you got death. Idolatry, you got death. Um, adultery, um, homosexuality, you got death. Under certain laws, you got, that's why it says, by the law, almost all things are purged without blood. Almost all things. But in Acts, he said what? We are justified through Christ by all things in Acts 13, 38, and 39. So Christ justified us in everything. But Moses could not, because every animal, you cannot receive justification for every animal. For every sin, excuse me, for every sin. You understand? There were certain sins that, that, that you could not receive coverage from with animals. You know what I'm saying? Now, we, again, 28 again. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 28. Yes. He that despised Moses' law 
died without mercy under two or three witnesses. That's all I want. Now, go back to where we was at before. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 3. Yes. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God, sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. He condemned condemnation in the flesh, our, our death in the flesh, without mercy in the flesh. He removed the without mercy by dying on the cross, is what he's saying. Read on. Verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. So when Christ died on the cross, the righteousness of what? Read again. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. So we are still to fulfill what? The righteousness of the law. We are still to fulfill it. Go ahead. While acknowledging Christ dying for us. Go ahead. Who? Walk not after the flesh. We don't follow the law of the flesh. Go ahead. But after the spirit. But after the spirit. Go ahead. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. They that are after the flesh are going to follow the laws of the flesh. Whatever your flesh says to do, you will do. If your flesh says go to a ditty party, you're going to go to a ditty party. You're going to third floor. Dang, you know what happens in ditty parties. Allegedly. Allegedly. I'm joking. <gasps> kind of joking. Not really joking. But you know what I'm saying. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Go ahead. For to be carnally minded is death. Do we what? For to be carnally minded is death. Carnally, mi carnally minded is earthly minded, stony minded, corruptible body minded, earthy tabernacle minded. You're doing what the law of the flesh tells you to do. Go ahead. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be what? But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. What does spiritually minded mean? Hold on, get John 6. John 6 and 63. To be spiritually minded means what? The book of John, chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Right, the words of Christ, they are spirit and they are life. Get on one more, Romans seven fourteen. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. The law is what? Spiritual. Go ahead. But I am carnal, sold under sin. So when you are spiritually minded, you are lawfully minded. The laws are in your mind. Spiritually minded or law minded is the same thing. Go back to Romans 8. The book of Romans, chapter 8. Verse 6. Verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, mm -hmm. but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Go ahead. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Because the carnal mind, the, the fleshly mind is what? It's enmity against God. It's hatred against God is what? Idolatry. It's idolatry. Go ahead. For it is not subject to the law of God. It is not what? For it is not subject to the law of God. So when you are not, man, this is more ammunition. When, it, when you are not subject to the laws of God, you are at enmity or hatred with God. That's what he's saying. Read again. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. The carnal mind or the fleshly mind is enmity against God. Go ahead. For it is not subject to the law of God. It is not subject to the law of God. So you must be, to avoid being sinful, you must be subject or a servant to the laws of God in the spirit of Christ. Go ahead. Neither indeed can be. Neither indeed can be subject to God. Go ahead. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. They that are in the flesh do what? They don't keep God's laws at all. That's what he's saying. Read on. But ye are, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Go ahead. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Go ahead. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. The spirit of Christ is in you. Go ahead. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body. He shall what? He, uh, Christ from the dead, shall also quicken your mortal body. He shall quicken or bring to life your mortal bodies. Go ahead. By his spirit that dwelleth in you. By his spirit that dwells in you. He'll take you out of that sinful state, that sinful state you was in in the world to bring you into his light. Go ahead. Therefore, commandments. Go ahead. Verse 12. Therefore, brethren. We are de debtors not to the flesh. We are not indebted or servants to the flesh. Go ahead. To live after the flesh. Go ahead. 
Four, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. If you fall, if you're carnally minded and not subject to the God's laws, you shall die. Go ahead. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body. But if you through the spirit of Christ, the laws in Christ, mortify the what? The deeds of what? Of the body, you shall live. If you mortify the deeds or the laws of your members or the body, you shall live. Go ahead. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The sons of God. All right. Get First John 4 and 2. The book of 1 John, chapter 4, verse 2. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. If you acknowledge that Christ came in the flesh, you're of God. When you say God is the Spirit, most people that say that, they're not in the Spirit of God. They're in idolatry, they're in Christianity, they're in Catholicism, they're somewhere, but not in this Bible. Read on. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Anyone that says that Christ did not come in the flesh, he did not have brown skin, he was not a man, is not of God. Is not of God. Go ahead. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. This is that spirit of Antichrist. Go ahead. Whereof ye have heard that it shall come, and even now already is it in the world. Right. So when people say that Christ, God is a spirit, or they say that Christ, uh, Christ pretty much was born miraculously, which is madness, pagan madness. But let's just entertain it for a moment because I have time to do so. Yeah, I do. So when they say that Christ was born miraculously, that would mean that Christ's birth was different from ours. Let me, let me, let me elaborate. Christ had no earthly father. He got dropped in his mom's womb magically, right? Then he comes into the world. Was his birth normal? No. So what Christianity says is that Christ, because Christ was born the way he was born, he, that means he was divine. And so his divinity makes it possible for him to keep the commandments of God. And because we're fleshly, we can't. That's the whole premise behind the virgin birth doctrine, to make Christ more than a man so that man has an excuse to not keep the laws that Christ is able to keep. That's why they push the virgin birth. It's a loophole around accountability. If Christ, Christ can do it because he wasn't a normal man. He was beyond man. He was a god on earth. He's Hercules. He was a demigod. He was half and half. So he can do that. But I'm a man. I'm fleshly, so I can't keep the commandments. But he did it for me. That's the premise behind the virgin birth. That's why this year I've seen a lot more of that. I'm seeing a lot more of the virgin birth being pushed heavy now on YouTube. Because they know if they push his divinity beyond his, his, his um, humanity, then that, makes it, that gives us the excuse to say, well, Christ kept the commandments for us because he was perfect. We're fleshly. We can't do it. He did it for us, so we can just believe in him, and that's it. That's the premise behind the virgin birth. The virgin birth is the doctrine of unaccountability. That's what it is. If he's a virgin birth, he can keep God's laws perfect. We're not like him. He did it for us. We ain't got to do nothing. Just believe in him, and that's it. That's the premise of the virgin birth. That's why it's being pushed so hard, because it makes... The, the walk of it makes the walk you can do whatever you want to do in Christ. That's where it comes from. That's the whole premise. So you want to know why they keep pushing it so hard? It's a virgin birth, virgin birth. It's not because it's um, God is powerful. He, God can't do it. No, no, no. It's not about that. It's about the fact that if you make Christ more than a man, then you can't do what He did. That's the premise. That's the whole point. Now, so when you deny His flesh, you're antichrist. Now, give me Hebrews 5 and 7. Book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 7. Who in the days of his flesh? Who in the days of what? Who in the days of his flesh? Read verse 5, please. Verse 5. So also Christ glorified not himself. That's it. Jump to verse 7. I know it's talking about Christ. Verse 7 again. 
who in the days of his flesh. His what? His flesh. Who in the days of his flesh. Christ walked on the earth with flesh, like Abraham in this room. Dang. Go ahead. When he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him. Stop. Unto him. Who's the him? He opened up strong prayers and supplications and te- with crying and tears unto him. Who's the him? Just say it loud. Oh, God. She just, oh. Get the mic. The Catholic Get the church mic. is in here. Get the- oh, God, goodness. Come on, man. Please redeem yourselves. You want me to read it again for him? Yeah, read it for him again, please. It. All right. Who? Verse 7 again. I'll read it slow. Who in the days of his flesh. Who's the his flesh here? Yes. Go ahead. When he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him. Who's the him there? That's the father. That's two separate entities. He crying and praying unto himself. Make it make sense. Read on. That was able to save him from death. Now, his father was the one that was that gave him the power to, resurrect, to be resurrected. Go ahead. And was heard in that he feared. And was heard by his father who he feared. Two separate entities. Now, give me, but the point I wanted was in his flesh. That's what I wanted. 415, chapter before. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 15. For we have not an high priest, which cannot be touched with the filling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. How was he tempted? Because Christ had flesh to be tempted in. That's how he was tempted. Because he walked in the flesh. And the, the, cha- the following chapter tells you he had flesh. This chapter 4. We were chapter 5 earlier. Now, get um, Hebrews 2 and 12. Book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 12. You're going to go over this slow because I have time. Uh, I got five minutes. Go ahead. The book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 12. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. I will declare my name unto my brethren, his brothers. Go ahead. And again, I will put my trust in him. No, no. Read verse 12 again. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. Mm-hmm. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. So the church in verse 12 is his brethren. It's referring to Israel. The church and his brethren is one and the same. That's a piece of the church. His brethren and the church is one and the same. Go ahead. And uh, Verse 13. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again. And again. Behold, I and the children which God have give, for, given me. And again, behold. So he calls his brethren in verse 12. His children that God gave him. Hold on to that. Get Isaiah 8 real fast. Isaiah 8 verse 17. I have less time than I thought I had. Isaiah 8 17. The book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse 17. Yeah. And I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob. No, no Isaiah 8 17. Where are we at? Isaiah 8 17. No, no, that's Isaiah 8, 17. And I, oh, yeah, I wait upon the Lord, you said? Would you read? Yeah, yes, sir. Read again, I'm sorry. The book of Isaiah chapter 8, verse 17. And I will wait upon the Lord. That's it, yeah. That hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Verse 18, so this is Isaiah talking about himself and his kids. Read. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord have given me. That's in Hebrews uh, 2. I and the children what? I and the children whom the Lord have given me. Go ahead. Are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Go back to Hebrews 2 again. So he's this is Paul quoting Isaiah regarding someone else. So Christ Isaiah was speaking in the spirit regarding something else, someone else. Aside from himself. Read verse 13 again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 13. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. And again, behold, I and the children which God have given me. That's Isaiah 8, 18. Watch. So he calls, first they're called brethren, church, then they're called his children. Read on. Verse 14. Watch this. For as much then, as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. As the children, 
which, which were given to Christ, as Verna is his 12 disciples, and Israel, as the children or his brethren are what? Are partakers of, of, of flesh and blood. Of flesh and blood. Go ahead. He also himself likewise took part of the same. Christ himself took part in the same. He took on the same flesh and blood as his brethren or his what? Children. His creation. Read on. That through death. That he, through his own death. He might destroy him that had the power of death. That, that is, is the, the devil. devil. Now. Did John 17. No. Give me a. Uh, read on. Read on. Read on down. Read down. Yes, sir. Verse 15. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to If you to got bondage. that, you didn't get it. If you got it, you got it. If you didn't, you didn't. That's something that's maybe over some of y'all heads. We have this written in verse 14. But read, verse, read on. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Go ahead. Wherefore in all things it behooved him. 16 again? 16 one more time? 16? Yes, sir. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, Go ahead. but he took on him the seed of of Abraham. He came as a man, a living man. Go ahead, father and mother. Go ahead. Wherefore, in all things. In all things. Go ahead. It behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. Like his what? His brethren. Like his brethren. Made like unto his brethren or his disciples. Made the same way. Father and mother. Go ahead. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. Watch this. In things pertaining to God. To make reconciliation for the sins of the people. To die for us. Watch verse 18. For in that he himself have suffered being tempted. How? Because he was what? Flesh and blood. Go ahead. He is able to succor them that are tempted. He can relate to those who are tempted because he was tempted also. He was a man so he can relate to man problems. No demigod walking around. He was a man walking the earth with power. 1 Corinthians 15. A little faster now. First Corinthians 15, 21. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 21. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. So through Adam came death, but through Christ, resurrection of the dead. Go ahead. For as in Adam all die, mm -hmm. even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So read again. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Right. So through Adam people die, through Christ we all live again. Go ahead. Read on 20. That's 22, right? Yes, Jump to verse 42. Verse 42. So, also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. We're sown in corruption or, we're, or in sin did my mother conceive me. In sin did my mother conceive me by David saying the same thing. That the stony hearts is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption, meaning immortal bodies. Go ahead. It is sown in dishonor. This, uh, this body is vile, vile body. It is dishonor. Go ahead. It is raised in glory. That's, that's Philippians 3 and 21. Go ahead. It is sown in weakness. It is sown in weakness. The flesh is weak. Go ahead. It is raised in power. It is raised to be to sub, all things in subjection under it. Go ahead. It is sown a natural body. Natural body, earthly body, earthly tabernacle, corruptible body, vile body, same thing. Go ahead. It is raised a spiritual body. Go ahead. There. Is a natural body, and there is a spiritual there's body. There's a natural body, and there's a spiritual body. Go ahead. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Uh, the natural body? The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Spiritual body. How be it? That was not first, which is spiritual. Adam wasn't spiritual. He thought he was, he wasn't. Go ahead. But that which is natural. He was naked. Same thing. Go ahead. And afterward, that which is spiritual. Christ. 47. The first man is of the earth. Earthy. Adam was sinful. Earthy. Vain, go ahead. The second man is the Lord from heaven. So um, that's what I want. Get Colossians 3 and 5 regarding earthy. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 5. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. One more time. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Mortify your members which are upon the earth. Upon the earth is what? The earth is your flesh. Go ahead. Fornication, uh -huh. uncleanness, inordinate affection, 
evil concupiscence. That's what Paul was battling with, evil concupiscence. Go ahead. And covetousness. And covetousness, go ahead. Which is idolatry. Because all nine commandments violate the tenth. Say it again. All nine commandments violate the tenth. You break any laws from one to nine, you've broken ten automatically. Thou shalt not steal his covetousness. Thou shalt not kill his covetousness. Thou shalt not bear false witness his covetousness. They all go back to that same thing, which means serving other guys, which is primarily other guys or yourself. One God or the other. Go to Psalms 139, verse 13. Psalms 139, verse 13 and 16. I'm about to fly through this. The book of Psalms, chapter 139, verse 13. For thou hast possessed my reins, that has covered me in my mother's womb. He said, God has possessed, this is David talking, read again. For thou hast possessed my reins. This is mine. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. You put me in the womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Go ahead. Marvelously are thy works. Marvelous are thy works, go ahead. And that, and that my soul knoweth right well. Go ahead, watch this. My substance was not hid from thee. His body was not hid from the Lord. Go ahead. When I was made in secret. He was formed. Go ahead. And curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. Curiously wrought means he was forming in his mother's womb. And it says the earthly part, lowest parts of the earth, it means that the embryo, all of that stuff, how it was forming, that's the Lord, Lord putting it in there, forming it. All right, read on. Verse 16. Thy eyes did see my substance. His body. Go ahead. Yet being unperfect. Not being fully formed yet. Go ahead. And in thy book, all my members were written. The Lord knew, I'm going to put that in him. Okay, I'm going to put that in her. I'm going to put that in him. Okay, you're going to have a stealing spirit. You're going to have a lying spirit. You're going to have an adultery spirit. You're going to have an idolatry spirit. You're going to have a fornication spirit. That's going to be It's going to be your battle. It's going to be your battle. It's going to be your battle. It's going to put that in there. You're going to have it around, you're going to develop it around 12. You're going to develop it around 18. You're going to develop it around 21. The Lord put these things. He formed these things. Read 16 again. Thy eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. Not being fully formed yet. Go ahead. And in thy book. In God's book. In his book. Go ahead. All my members were written. God, make, he's going to be tall. He'll be five foot two. He'll be six foot four. She'll be six foot four. She'll be six foot two. She'll be five foot one. She'll have brown hair. She'll have blue eyes. She'll have brown eyes. She'll have gray eyes. She'll have woolly hair. She'll have fine hair. Read again. He'll have fine hair. He'll have woolly hair. Read again. Thy eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written. Go ahead. Which in continuance were fashioned. Completed. Go ahead. When as yet there was none of them. So the Lord formed your body before it was even formed. It's formed in heaven first. Dang. And he puts it in the womb. And it forms the exact way it would be in the heavens. Okay. It's like the most out of diagram. I'm going to make them like this. All right, sit him down. When you go in there, you form the exact same way you read inside this book. Whatever's in you, whatever come with that flesh is in the book too. Whether you over, whether if that, that flesh he puts on you overcomes you, that's your lot. If you overcome it, that was your lot either, your lot too. Yeah, create a player pretty much, pretty much, yeah. Get, um, I don't want that so much. Two fourteen. Get me... Ecclesiastes 7.25. Let's skip some stuff. Ecclesiastes 7.25. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 25. So, I got to skip some stuff. Um, I skipped that in no sense. Uh, that's fine. I'll, I'll just, I'll just, go ahead. Read that. 25. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 25. Go ahead. I applied my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. So Psalm is telling you, Psalm, like I said before, when, you, when you're in an open book, it's hard for Satan to come at you. So Psalm is saying, I sought my mind to learn, seek out wisdom, the reason of things, um, wickedness and folly, even foolishness and madness. I want to learn all these things. The Simon had all the wisdom of righteousness, but he wants to know the, the psychology of wickedness too. He wants to know everything. Read on. 
And I found more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands is bands. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by because her. Because he fell victim to his wives and their idolatry. So he's talking about them. Now, go to 1 and 17. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 17. And I gave my heart to know wisdom right. and to know madness and folly. Mm -hmm. I perceive that this also is vexation of spirit. This is a waste of time learning this stuff. Go ahead. For in much wisdom is much grief. And you learn, that's why Paul said earlier, the more he followed Christ in the spirit, the more he found a law in his members fighting against him. Read verse 18 again. For in much wisdom is much grief. For in much wisdom, the more wisdom you gain in this truth, the more grief you're going to face. That's why in that clip earlier he said, to be a good writer, you must what? Suffer more. Whether it be internally or externally, you're going to suffer more. We 18 again. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increase of knowledge increase of sorrow. When you increase knowledge, you increase sorrow. What did Adam do? He increased knowledge. What did he end up doing? Increasing sorrow. Because the same thing that... <laughs> Adam is telling you what... Solomon's telling you what Adam did. Pretty much. All right? I'll leave it there. Uh, give me uh, Genesis. No, I don't want that. Give me Sirach 49.16. Am I going to have time for that? Yeah. Yeah, real quick. Sirach 49.16. The book of Sirach, chapter 49, verse 16. Sim and Seth. We're in great honor among men. Shem and Seth were had an honor of great. Uh, well, Shem and Seth were what? Shem and Seth were in, uh, in great honor among men. Right. And so was Adam above every living thing in the creation. Adam was above every living thing in creation. Get 47, verse 6, verse 13. Sirach, chapter 47, verse 13. Solomon reigned in a peaceable time and was honored, for God made all quiet around, around him, about him. That he might build a house in his name and prepare his sanctuary forever. Jump to verse 17. Verse 17. The country. No, jump to verse 19. Verse 19. Thou didst bow thy loins unto women. So Solomon did. Bow his loins unto women. Go ahead. And by thy body thou wast brought unto, uh, into subjection. That, that, that's what was in him. Go ahead. Thou didst stain thy honor and pollute thy seed. That's what he did. Go ahead. So that thou broughtest wrath upon thy children. And was grieved for thy father. He was grieved for your father. That's what Adam, that's what Adam did. Get 1 Corinthians 15, 15 and 48. So Solomon gained a lot of wisdom, but Solomon had vices. He had vices. As despite his wisdom and understanding that, he, that God gave him, Solomon had, he was a fleshly man. And he had vices and evils that were within him that he decided to entertain. And it cost him. 1 Corinthians 15, 48. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 48. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Mm -hmm. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. This cannot inherit the kingdom of God. This is not made for the kingdom of God. It's made for the earth. It's made of the earth for the earth. But our body is going to be made for the kingdom of God, something entirely different. Go ahead. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Go ahead. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment. Changed to a new body. Go ahead. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall, and we shall be changed. Go to, real quick, uh, 2 Edges 8.52. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 8, verse 52. For unto you is paradise open. For unto you what? What he told Ezra? For unto you is paradise open. He said, Ezra, unto you, Ezra, and those who follow his example today, unto you, Ezra, what? Paradise is open. Paradise is open. Go ahead. The tree of life is planted. The tree of life that Adam was, was by is planted. Go ahead. The time to come is prepared. The time to come is prepared. Go ahead. Plenteousness is made ready. Uh huh. A city is builded and rest is allowed. Yea, perfect goodness and wisdom. Verse 53. The root of evil is sealed up from you. The what? The root of evil is sealed up from you. What's the root of evil? That's this flesh here. 
that root, that malignant, malignant root is gone. Go ahead. Weakness and the moth is hid from you. Weakness is this flesh and the moth is death. Your body turns to ashes, your moths and ashes. It's hit from you. It's gone. Go ahead. And corruption is fled into hell to be forgotten. And corruption is gone because now you're what? Incorruptible. Go ahead. Sorrows are past. Sorrows are past. And in the end, it showed the treasure of immortality. Is what? And in the end, it showed the treasure of immortality. Get Romans 8. Almost done. Romans 8, verse 20. In the end, it's shown immortality. Romans 8, verse 20. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 20. For the creature was made subject to vanity. Adam was made subject to vanity. Adam figured out when he got convinced of his wife to go into idolatry, he was convinced. He realized, oh, man, I'm naked. I'm, va I'm vain. I'm sinful. Go ahead. Not, willing, not willingly. But not willingly. He wasn't made that way willingly on his own. Go ahead. But by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. God made him that way on purpose. So all these things happening right now before you, us, are here today. All those things are laid out. As, a, as um, to lead up to now and before the beginning. Go ahead. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption. Bondage of corruption is what? It's this flesh here. Go ahead. Into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Go ahead. The kingdom. Go ahead. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together unto now. Go ahead. 23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves. Waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Why is he saying redemption of your body? Redemption means to redeem what you had before. The redemption of your body means you get the body that you had in the heavens as, as designed. You're going to get it back. Who you were before, you're going to become again. Get second, just, um, second Corinthians 5 and 1. So who you were before, you're going to gain that same body back once again that you had before. Before we fell and got put in this earth. Five and one or two, real quick, come on. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. Wait, wait, read it again. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle the were earthly dissolved. House, the earthly house, the earthly tabernacle, back of Wisdom of Psalm 9. It's the same, the same thing, go ahead. We have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. We have a eternal body waiting for us in the heavens. Waiting for us to do what? Redeem it. Get it back. Get on. For in this we groan, earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon our house, which with that, is with from, our house. With our house. Which, verse two again. Verse two again. For in this we groan, earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. Right. Go ahead. If so, be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Not be found what? Naked. Like who? Like who was? Like Adam was. Adam was naked, but in the kingdom, we won't be anymore. Go ahead. For we that are in this tabernacle. In this tabernacle. Do groan. Go ahead. Being burdened. Burdened with what? That battle between the law and your members and the law of the spirit of Christ. Go ahead. Not for that we will be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up. But we shall be clothed with what? The white raiment, the white garments. You won't be naked anymore. Go ahead. That mortality might be swallowed up. Mortality, might, mortality will be swallowed up. It'll be gone. Go ahead. Now, he that have wrought us for the self same thing is, that's is God. That's all I want. Well, Todd, we will be a mortal again. We'll be a mortal. Give me second Ezra 2 and 10. Second Ezra 2, verse 10. So, once again, once we're able to understand, acknowledge what we battle and overcome it, we'll be able to inherit the bodies that, that the Lord has prepared for us. Like Deacon Malachi brought out last week in the great class. He brought this out before. But there's a battle ahead of you before that can take place. Before the persecution comes upon us, we got to make sure that the battle within us, we're able to battle that first and foremost. 2, two and 10. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 2, verse 10. Thus saith the Lord unto Ezra, Tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I would have given unto Israel. Go ahead. Their glory also will I take unto me. Watch this. And give these the everlasting tabernacles, which I have prepared for them. Read it again. Their glory, Their also, glory. also will I take unto me. Uh -huh. And give these the everlasting tabernacles. What's that, what's, what's that going into? Everlasting tabernacle. What's that talking about? 
the immortal bodies, everlasting tabernacles. Go ahead. Which I had prepared for them. Which he had prepared for us from what? From the very beginning, before we were sent down here. All right. Uh, read on, verse 12. They shall have the tree of life. They shall have the tree of life, immortality, all understanding, all wisdom, all power. Go ahead. For an ointment of sweet savor. For an ointment of sweet savor. Go ahead. They shall neither labor nor be weary. They shall neither what? They shall neither labor nor be weary. They shall neither labor nor be weary. Remember Adam, he told Adam from the, from the flesh, from the flesh, sweat of your brow. But he says, when we get the kingdom, we will not be weary nor labor. All right? So I'm ending on that. Hope you all enjoyed the class. Okay. Okay. Okay.